Managers of Reddit, what was the worst case of I demand to speak to the manager you've experienced? I'm a manager at a McDonald's. I worked at a store right off an exit to the highway. Woman bought a burger, let it sit and wanted a refund because it was cold. She had bought the burger in another state, demanded money from the cashier, demanded to see me, demanded corporate number. Sorry mom, violating thermodynamics costs extra. At Red Lobster someone grabbed the manager and told him his shrimp was cold, wanted a free beer, and he could get better fish by fishing. This manager was my dad, and was meeting us after work, and apparently looked like an authority figure since he had a tie on. My dad replied that's cocktail shrimp you moron. I think this is my favorite one yet. This bacon is so raw, I can still hear it mooing. 1. It was pre-cooked bacon. 2. I know dang well that bacon never mood. I feel a Gordon Ramsay coming on. I worked at an independent chocolate shop that sold various flavors of truffles, brownies and drinks. We had non-dairy options, vegan options and nut-free options. A woman demanded to speak to the manager because we did not have a dairy-free, nut-free, sugar-free, vegan option. Luckily the owner literally just laughed and said we do have one it's called water. I have never seen such entitled rage. If said shop happened to be in a weird yuppie footy type of area, I bet they could make carob goods for nut jobs like this woman. Fake chocolate with fake sugar and charge considerably more than normal for it because it's specialty. Even if they tasted freaking horrible, fad dieters would buy them up in a heartbeat. I had a super old guy come in to buy shoes and wouldn't let my employee help him because she was a female. She has tattoos and piercings and stuff so I thought she was over exaggerating and maybe he was just offended by her appearance. He asked to speak to the manager and then I came out to talk to him. I'm also a female. Needless to say he didn't buy any shoes. I worked the customer service desk at a grocery store. One afternoon a guy came storming over after getting checked out and threw a package of beef in front of me. He starts going off, yelling and cussing at me because he was supposed to get a $3.54 discount, but the register only took off $3.53. He was screaming at me that he wanted his penny back, and that it wasn't even about the penny, but it was the principle of the thing. By the time he was through, he had yelled at me, my customer service manager, and our store manager on duty. As soon as I gave him that penny though, he shut right up and left. Principle of the thing I guess. I would have told him I don't help people who scream at me like that. It's not even about the screaming. It's the principle of the thing. I was a shift lead at a GameStop and was the manager on duty with one other associate in the store. We were pretty busy. Both the other employee and I were on registers ringing through our own respective lines. Poor guy I work with gets this soccer mom haircut that I knew was gonna be trouble and she is trying to return a new game that had the seal broken on it. Against return policy. Can't help you. So lady then gets really upset and demands to cancel all of her son's predators. My guy obliges and is preparing to give her her refund in store credit because her son had only paid for the Priadas with trades. You can't mix match tenders, so my guy informed her so. That was just it. She was instantly screaming and calling my associate a liar. He literally turns the computer screen towards her and shows her the entry is in trade credit but she isn't having it. Let me speak to your manager. Dude points to me, I wrap up with my customer and we trade registers so he can keep helping out. I ask her how I can help to which she screams her experience at me. I reiterate what my buddy informed her and that there isn't any way we can get her cash back. She claims well I'm gonna call your corporate office and tell them that your policy doesn't apply to me and I've never been treated like this before. To which I happily offer her the corporate number and advise her that telling a corporate customer service line that they believe they are exempt from policy is probably not the best strategy. Woman gets red in the face and starts looking around the store. And god forbid the poor man. The old manager walks in. He does not work there anymore. But the woman recognizes him from his time at the store. She begins accusing me of lying to her because she knows that he is the real manager and that he can help her. Nope. Dude just trying to shop. She ended up just leaving in a huff. When will dumb tits learn you get farther with being nice and understand than you do being an ass? Worked front desk of a hotel. Had a woman throw a goddamn tantrum because the state we were in charge of 6% room tax. She demanded that I remove the tax. 
I told her that we had no control over taxes. She still wouldn't accept the reality of taxes so I printed off contact information for her state representative and told her to direct her complaints to them. She did not like that at all. She started screaming so I got my manager. My manager said basically what I said, that we cannot legally remove a tax. So the woman grabbed the bowl of mints on the counter and threw it at my head and stormed out. We had her credit card on file and charged her for the full amount. 7% room tax on top of a 9.5% sales tax here. I had so many people get upset over this. No one ever got violent though was a waiter at a small restaurant for a number of years. Worst incident involved a group of guys, 6-8, all in their late teens early 20s. They went all out, expensive drinks cocktails and everyone ordered a steak. The one that stuck out to me, and the one that eventually demanded to see the manager, ordered his medium well, with every sauce available, being garlic, mushroom and peppercorn. They stayed for over 2 hours, racking up the bar tab after they'd cleaned their plates, some of them even literally licking their plates. Well, they eventually call for the bill. I dutifully bring it over and the guy who ordered the steak with every sauce pulls me aside and says he's not paying for his steak. Why, may you ask? Apparently the garlic butter was frozen, therefore rendering the steak that he wolfed down completely inedible. I look him dead in the eye and say, dude, the garlic butter doesn't even stay in the freezer. There's no way it could have been frozen. Customer takes offense to this and demands to see the manager. I go to the back office and explain the situation. And as we're going through the kitchen, he stops me and asks if their plates are still in the unwashed stack. They were. And every plate was empty. Manager and myself walk out to the table. He asks what the problem is and 3 source guy points at me saying I have a terrible attitude and demands that his inedible steak be taken off the bill. Guy then explains that he goes to the best steak houses in city and knows a crap steak when he sees one. Manager looks at customer, looks at me, turns back to customer and plainly tells him, what kind of freaking moron orders all 3 sources on a steak. Screaming match ensues, entire table telling manager he's a freaking idiot and wouldn't know a good steak if someone slapped him with it. The manager screams at them to get the frick out of his restaurant, and their canessalarial tastes can suck a fat one. At the end of the night, the manager says that incidents like this happen every 2-3 years, usually a group of young guys and they're just looking to start a fight to skip out on the bill. Apparently he just absorbs a cost like this to avoid unnecessary drama. Man, I would have quietly called the police about them not paying if the bill was particularly high. I've had unhappy customers call and ask for the owner of the company by name because they googled it. I explained that that person is technically an owner, but has nothing to do with the business, and doesn't even live in the same state. Then I go on and solve their problem with what authority I have. Meanwhile, I'm that owner of the company. Never show all your cards when negotiating. I'm picturing someone walking into a Walmart in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, and demanding to see Doug McMillan. I had a woman called to tell me that she spent too little on an ice cream cone. We had a special that was like two scoops in a waffle cone for five bucks, and for some reason she only got one scoop and said she didn't know about the special, despite there being signs all over the shop about it. She claimed that my worker didn't offer it to her. I didn't focus on upselling at our store, so this wasn't a big deal to me. I apologized to her, but I was also like what exactly do you want me to do about it? This happened yesterday. I'm assuming you ate the ice cream so you can't return it. She wanted a refund anyway for the inconvenience. I asked if she had a receipt. She said she didn't. I said no go without a receipt. She said she didn't get one at checkout. I explained to her that in my state we're not required by law to give a receipt for cash purchased food service items. So if she didn't ask for one, tough luck. She kept pressing, saying she demanded to speak to the manager. I explained that I was the manager. She then asked if there was another manager she could speak to. I told her no, I was end of the line, top of the heap. No one else was going to tell her anything different. She huffed and told me she would be by to discuss it in person. She never came in. I always wonder why people waste so much of their time for $5. When I worked in a gas station, a dude that I knew was 18 came in and wanted some cigs. This guy was a dong. I knew he had his license revoked, so I asked for some id. He whipped out a fishing license written in pencil, so I refused to sell him cigs. 
and he was fairly upset. He yelled for a manager, and my manager came around the corner and told him that I was right. This was an unacceptable id. The kid told my manager I had sold cigs to him before, which was true. My manager just said that sucks, now leave. After he left, my manager said that she had sold to him before too, but he was a dong. So who gives a crap? Then the kid called my store, asked for my manager, and told the same manager that two employees were disrespecting him. He if someone calls again just play along like whoever is on the phone is firing those people. Like do all the yelling you're fired it'll be funny when he comes in the next day and you're still there. Obligatory not a manager, but, maybe not the worst, but this was definitely the dumbest I ever saw. A sign was accidentally left up from earlier in the week advertising men's Levi's as buy one, get one half off, so for two pairs, it would be roughly $90. The current sale was to get two pairs for $70. Had a lady pitch an absolute fit that they weren't ringing up by one. Get one half off. She was being ripped off, etc. Tried and tried to explain to her that we had accidentally missed a sign but that she was actually getting a better deal at the current price. She wouldn't have any of it and demanded to speak to the manager. Store leader comes out and tells her the exact same thing. But the lady will not listen and is adamant about getting them at the price on the sign. Store leader finally gives up and tells me to just go ahead and do a price override and charge her the extra money. Lady leaves smugly, like she thinks she's just worked us over big time and makes some kind of comment about how I need to learn to listen to customers on the way out. Had this happened before when I worked at Michael's, I don't think I fought them very hard on it, though, because I was like if you want to be in butthole, go ahead and pay extra money. I was busy at Christmas at an old job sorting out wrapping paper, etc. The queue got large, so I jumped on the till. A customer approached and complained about having to pay 5p for a plastic bag. The charge just started. She said she wasn't going to pay, so I charged her and asked for the next customer. She moaned that she wouldn't be able to carry everything. I asked for 5p. She asked to speak to my supervisor. I said I'll go get him. I left the tills. Turned a corner, waited a few seconds, and reappeared, informing her I was in charge. The amount of people who were kicking up a fuss about 5 bloody pence though, you'd think the government had started charging them for air. I used to work at the concession stand cafe at the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. We had snacks like potato chips and candy, as well as pre-made sandwiches from a local sandwich shop. We only got a certain number of sandwiches for each day, so when we ran out, that was it. This one lady who was in a wheelchair came through my line, telling me how she was diabetic and needed to eat a meal. I showed her that we had trail mix, candy, and chips, but she absolutely could not eat any of that because she was diabetic. It had to be a sandwich and nothing else. I told her we literally didn't have any sandwiches left, but she just kept repeating about how she was diabetic and she was told there would be sandwiches. But she was being incredibly rude to me, making a scene, and said I was told there would be sandwiches probably about 10 times. By this point there was a long line forming behind her while she was making a scene. She asked for the manager, so I told her she could step out of line and wait for the manager, but she wouldn't budge. The manager came over, and told her the exact same thing that I had. She eventually calmed down, moved out of the line, and agreed to have chips and candy, for free. I don't know who the frick told her about the sandwiches, but I want to slap them. One of the heads of a radiology department was infuriated when there was a network outage in his area. Stormed up into our support area screaming for a manager. Me. Listened to him rant and rave and finally decided to take a walk down there to see what I could do. Start looking around and I find a bunch of $10 network hubs splitting one PC connection to 8 PCs. I started laughing and asked who put these hubs in. He said I did what's so funny. Explained that he was the source of his own problem. Started disconnecting the hubs and guess what the network came back up. I confiscated about 7 hubs and told him if he needs more connections he has to contact engineering and have them run more lines. He flipped out and I just walked down the hall to his VP's office and explained what happened. When I was leaving the office the VP called him. He no longer works here. Artalus from Tech Support. This happened before I started working in the store, but a trailer park-esque mother was stupid enough to steal from us and then tried to purchase a sale item to make it look less suspicious. 
When the cashier who was aware of the situation was acting strangely, she took offense and demanded a manager be brought over. Our lovely and heavily pregnant manager calmly informed her that she was aware there were stolen goods in her bag, and this woman punched her in the face. I was the VP of sales for OF500 here in the states. At about 6.30pm my office phone rang and it was a person from HR asking if I could take a call in which the client was irate and threatening legal action. I get on the phone and I quickly realize there is zero chance of making this man happy. And ironically, I'm a big fan of firing crappy clients. The things he was demanding were simply ridiculous and I politely refused. I also stated that I would personally allow his company from its contract with no fees or costs. Of course, still not good enough and I eventually hung up due to the screaming and foul language. Long story short, I found out the next day that he was arrested for trespassing that evening while trying to enter our corporate suburban office with two guns. But the joke was on him bc I worked in our corporate downtown office. Dodge a bullet there. I was running a coffee shop by myself, when this dude came in, asked for an egg sandwich, no big deal, I start making his, then the next customer asks for a BLT, I start warming the bacon on the skillet next to first customer's egg and this guy waits until I hand him the already made sandwich to freak out, he needed his food to be halal. But our coffee shop was very much not halal. After demanding free food, refund, etc he starts getting heated and loud. He tries to pull the whole let me see your manager thing. Unfortunately for him it's me. He literally had been yelling at me for 15 minutes when I said, you know what, let's call my friend, the owner of this establishment, and see what they have to say about it. I dial her up, explain what's going on. He grabs my phone from me. Tells her he's going to call the police and file a lawsuit for discrimination. Throws my phone on the ground, then storms out. This isn't the owner, this is a cell phone. Managers of Reddit, what is a Karen experience like? What was your worst experience? I loved Karens when I was managing. Being able to say I am the manager followed soon by sorry. That's company policy always results in a flustered Karen leaving in a huff and a much relieved crew. Yep. Then I would get well give me your boss's cell number. Absolutely not. There's no way in heck I'm giving out his number. You can come in tomorrow when he's here or call us. Happened before I became a manager. But once while I was serving at Steak and Shake. Customer had a coupon for a burger. Fries and a shake for dollar sign XXX. Can't remember the price anymore. Anyway, on the coupon it specifically stated that cheese on the burger was $0.39 up charge. Although it did have a picture of a burger with cheese on it. Lady threw a fit in the dining room that I was treating her unfairly. It was false advertising, etc, etc. I told her I agree it's false advertising with the picture. But the text specifically states the upcharge and unfortunately I can't do anything about it. The lady at the next table overheard everything and literally got up and put $0.50 on the table to cover it and said something to the effect of I'll pay for your dang cheese if you just shut up. This pee the cheese lady off even more. My manager obviously sensed the issue and came out. Took the cheese up charge of the bill. Like WTF Karen. Love how that other lady, I think I'll call her Laren, is like the anti Karen. She probably has daughters. Work at a vacuum repair shop. People don't pay attention to their vacuum cleaners as much as you'd think lol. I can tell you how many times someone comes to pick up their vacuum and says oh this one isn't mine or mine didn't have scratches down the side. I can tell you it is. And it came in with all those scratches on the side. After the first two times it happened to me we started taking pictures of the unit with serial numbers and customer info. Send them home with the serial number and require them to bring it back for pickup. Despite the evidence, I've had a lady close to tears because we didn't have her vacuum. Even with the pictures we had of it to drop off, her information, the matching serial numbers. Sure it's a big conspiracy we just love taking in vacuums and switching all the information around because it's fun. People need to pay more attention. I was the only person on shift, which made me the de facto manager. Five minutes before closing, a woman comes in and is so angry that we don't have any decaf. She demands to speak to the manager. 
I tell her that's me because I'm the only one here, and the coffee pots are clean for the night because it's 5 minutes to close. No, I'm sorry, I can't make another pot just for her. There's another place around the corner. She screams at me, tells me she's going to find a real manager and get my ass butt fired throws half a cup of Capix in a machine sludge at me, and starts to look like she's gonna jump the counter. I'm holding a hammer under the counter thinking don't do it, don't do it. I pick up the phone like I'm going to call the cops. She leaves. I lock the door. She comes back and runs faster first into the glass door, like a bird. I'm not in retail anymore, but I was managing a popular mid-range handbag store. Think typical Karen bag, about $200-400. Anyway, most customers were fantastic. This one woman was this Shrek looking large red headed lady who stomped in and demanded that we repair her 20 year old bag for free. And if we couldn't do that, she demanded that we exchange this old ratty smelly 20 year old bag for a brand new one for her. Recently policy changes had resulted in new prices for this service, but free repairs had about a 1 year warranty on a new bag. Not a 20 year old one. I tell her as such. I was pretty young to have had the role I did so she, dissatisfied with my answer, asked to speak to a manager. I told her I'm the manager and she began turning as red as her hair. She screamed and yelled about how she'll call corporate and never shop here again. Well, that sounds like a real loss. Losing a customer that is too cheap to repair a 20 year old bag and hasn't bought new from us in just as long. I give her my best crap eating grin and say I am so sorry, that's just the policy, she demands corporate's number, I give her the customer service line that you can find on google, unbeknownst to her, she huffs away, forgetting her keys on the counter, she's halfway out and she remembers, turns around, red as a beat, huffs in my smiling face and snatches the keys off the counter, it was hilarious. She came back months later, worked with a different person on the team, and didn't even look my way. Wasn't the manager but worked at an REI for a while. One incident comes to mind though, involving an ex-marine who worked at our store fixing bikes. He had to run to the back to grab a part and as he was going back to the bike shop on the other side of the store a customer who was already being pretty loud and aggressive with everyone decided to grab my co-worker by the arm very aggressively and... Try spin him around to face him. Marine training kicked in and the next thing I know angry customer man is laying in the remains of a display about 8 feet away. Of course he jumps up screaming and yelling that he's going to sue us and get my co-worker fired. And we're all going to jail yada yada yada. Manager comes out. Heard the story. Looks at the security footage. And tells the customer he is never allowed to grab employees like that. He's welcome to call the cops if he would like because she's willing to press charges against him for assault. And he was banned from our store. No one at the store was upset about losing that customer. He was kind of notorious for being a jerk and constantly trying to abuse our return policy. As a long time REI member, I am so happy that this wasn't a story that made me want to stop going there. Not a manager. But I used to work in a call center and had plenty of Karens who wanted to talk to someone above me because they thought the world existed to cater to them. I always went back into their accounts to review the notes to see what was done. 9 out of 10 times they were given whatever they wanted even if it wasn't justified. Which is so freaking stupid. Enabling these people's behavior is what's got them feeling so entitled in the first place. I once told a woman if she didn't pay for her services, after 60 days they'd be interrupted. She responded with excuse me I'm a valued customer and that is not how I will be treated, or something to that effect. Freaking ridiculous. At some point you need to do a customer evaluation. Banks for example will just hike up fees and reduce services if they want you to quit them. I love the ones who seem to think extra food is free. You're not going to go anywhere and get extra meat quizo guacamole etc for free. I had a couple come in got a salad. They asked for extra meat. Then quizo then even more quizo. I told them they would be charged for each scoop. She flipped out. She started cussing at me about how it's wrong she shouldn't have to pay for more than one. Why must we be so expensive the other location does not do this. I gave her a big smile and let her know I am the general manager of that said store and help here when needed. 
so no you do not get that treatment there sorry extra food is not free. She then started screaming for corporate number and the store owner. I told her I couldn't give out people's private numbers and told her to leave and she is now banned from both stores. She did put in a compliant and guess who sees M and makes return calls? Me. She hung up on me when I called. I love when someone is unhappy with their meal and you fire something else for them, but they want the first meal to go and put in a box. No no, sorry, doesn't work that way. I was working at a public pool in my town, and the rules are that you can't bring outside food or drinks into the pool. This rule didn't please Karen, who was very eager to let me know that she had just spent $12 on this coffee from Starbucks, but she argues with me by saying that the public pool in the next town over allows it. I keep saying the same rehearsed response, that it's our policy that outside food and drinks can't come in the pool. Anyway she dumped the coffee onto our computer and I called the police. I think the one standout I remember was a few years ago when my company, cell phone provider, gave everyone unlimited data for like 3 months for no charge. It was essentially a stress test on our network, but everyone was getting free data so it wasn't like anyone could complain. Or so I thought, I talked to one lady who had demanded a manager because unlimited phone data wasn't enough, they wanted unlimited data on their hotspot as well. She then threatened to get us all fired because we wouldn't give her unlimited data through her hotspot, which was actually a feature we didn't even offer paying customers at the time. She ranted and raved for a while and we ended up passing her between like 5 levels of supervisors before she gave up. That's a perfect Archu Singbuggers post waiting to happen. Exactly the thing that sub was designed for. I worked at a grocery store in high school, and last summer I came back as my summer job. We did this 10 for $10 deal wherein we'd have a bunch of crap on sale for a buck a piece, and then the 11th was free. We were open 24 hours, but all of our sales kicked in at 6am. And we weren't allowed to change it early in the register, as it's clearly stated in the first page of the flyer and in the app. This is important. I'd sometimes work third shift if they needed someone to fill in. Had this morbidly obese woman come in with literally a cart full of tuna at 4am. Easily 300-400 of them, as she had just taken the stand-up display boxes off the shelf. Of course, none of them ring up as on sale, and she starts screaming at the girl in front. The girl is explaining that this is how our policy works, and she's yelling about false advertising in our app and how she deserves the price change. I go up and try to placate her, as I've been here long enough, and she starts fuming about how the app is lying because it says this date and it's already midnight. I zoom in on the bit where it says her prices are only good at 6am and she goes purple. Are you really arguing with a customer right now? I tell her I am not, just pointing out what the ad says and she insists on seeing the manager. He tells her the same thing the two of us had, and she screamed about not knowing why she even bothered to shop here, and stormed off. I didn't go back to that job this summer. This sounds like a midwestern grocery store chain near me with a red logo, blue carts and a dumb app. One time a Karen tried to return an expensive handbag that had obviously been used. She proceeded to say I was calling her a liar and her anger escalated as she paced back and forth at the till point. The Karen then proceeded to tell me that she was going to call in some guys to come after me after I finish work. Throughout this I am politely repeating my request that Karen leave but in hindsight I think this must have been rather annoying. As Karen proceeded to grab the bag and launch herself over the till at me in an attempt to hit me with it. At this point in time, a colleague who was yet to start their shift therefore appeared as a customer, was on the shop floor and had witnessed it all. They tackled Karen into the wall, knocking down glass shelves which had been displaying around 30 bags. Karen is a crumpled mess on the floor, appears shocked, stumbles upright and runs away. Unfortunately this pretty much explains why Karens of the world are placated. Who wants to run the risk of physical assault nowadays? Especially in my state, as of the 1st of November we can conceal carry guns without permits. I was a manager at a Little Caesars about 15 years ago. I'd typically work 3 or 4 closing shifts a week, and then one opening shift. Back then, they ran the $5 pizza thing but it was typically only on Wednesdays. Throughout the week, they usually ran 2 pizzas for dollar sign x specials. This happened on one of those nights. 
a male Karen placed an order via phone, and then came to pick it up. I believe he ordered something like a two pizza deal, but then wanted bread and sauce when he got there. Well, he didn't have enough money for the bread and sauce. He only brought enough for the pizza. I told him that I'm sorry, and there was nothing I could do. He looked at me and said angrily my kids want that bread. I repeated to him again that there wasn't really much I could do. I couldn't give away food without it being paid for as I would get in trouble. Keep in mind, he was there while there were several other customers in the store. Had he been alone, I might have just handed it over. He threw an absolute crap fit, called me several names, and then told me this isn't over and then he left with the pizzas that he paid for. I found out the next day that he talked to the store manager, and he obviously fabricated quite a bit of the story. She called me at home, and reamed me over the phone. Apparently, I belittled the guy for being too poor to afford bread for his kids and I embarrassed him in front of other customers. When in reality, I apologized probably three or four times, and just told him that I would be in trouble if I just start giving stuff away. She decided to write me up for a lack of customer service skills, and ended up comping the guy an order up to $40 to be used whenever he wanted. He came in the very next day when both the store manager and I were working. I was nothing but pleasant to him even then, and I even apologized if there was a misunderstanding. He still acted like a prick while I was taking his order. He threw in a few the customer is always right mentions and the younger generation doesn't know how to treat customers. Whatever, I'm glad the store manager was there that day because I was planning on quitting for being disciplined for doing nothing wrong. I made his pizzas very well, then I tossed them, pan and all several feet across the kitchen onto the oven conveyor making a slight mess, and told the store manager that I refuse to work for a has. Bean hag who treats her employees like garbage. I walked out and told the guy to enjoy his pizza. I worked there for two years. I had a 9-5 manufacturing job a few days later at a small family owned company right near home. I had no clue that some companies actually treated their employees like human beings until I worked there. Former fast food worker reporting about a male Karen. He came through the drive through and handed me what I knew to be a fake $100 bill. I knew it was fake, but the process was to make sure the deposit box bill feeder didn't accept it. Well of course it didn't because that crap was fake. So he pulls around and comes inside yelling and calling me racist. Dude was black, because I wouldn't take his fake 100. He called for the manager and I bailed to the back because I wanted to leave the twilight zone. Someone in a comment above said that the male version of a Karen is called a Dave. This was 30 years ago and there was literally no way I could help this woman. She left while yelling that she hoped my dog died. Loss prevention manager at a retail store. So part of my job was to be the no guy. If there was a customer we were not able to help and they started becoming hostile I was the one who went to defuse the situation because if it escalated I was the only one certified to touch a customer if it came down to safety and security issues. On this particular time my Karen was at guest service with her small child in a shopping cart maybe 2 years old or so. Karen was super frustrated with my employee who was trying to tell her that she could not return her DVD she had purchased for multiple reasons. She didn't have a receipt which she could have used in it to return it however the DVD was also opened and the DVD had a scratch as well. I can already hear her screaming as I approach so have an idea of what's going on already and she immediately begins yelling at me about how my employee doesn't know the store policies and she just wants to return the DVD. I explained to her that it's not only store policy but also a copyright law was involved since it was an unwrapped open and apparently used DVD. She said okay well I got home opened it and there was a scratch on it so now what? I told her well in that case within our policy and the law I can of course exchange that for the same item however I would have to open it before she leaves so that no laws are broken and she doesn't try to return it elsewhere. After more screaming and cursing in front of her child she finally says fine I don't want to return it anymore you can just have it. Then she winds up and frisbees the DVD past my head. Here's the best part now she leaves kicking and screaming and about 30 minutes later I get a call to guest service and it's the same lady this time she says she talked to her husband and there was a misunderstanding and she would like her DVD back. Which I sadly had to tell her I'm sorry mom we have already added that to the trash compactor. 
I may have escalated the situation a bit too as it was only I think a $10 DVD and if I really wanted to I could have done something to help her for only $10 but with the way she was acting there was no way I was doing anything to encourage that behavior. I'm not a manager, but I work as a server part time. About a month ago I had a table consisting of a mother, a father, and their son. Around 10. They seemed like a normal family at first, but the whole experience turned sour very quickly. After I put their order in and got them drinks I had to visit my three other tables that were sat a couple minutes before. I take about 5 minutes introducing myself to a party of 10 and getting their orders and walk over to Karen because she was waving at me. She told me that they needed more water. The cup was still halfway full, but I told her I would bring it as soon as I could. I then go to my other two tables and get their orders. All of a sudden I hear Karen screaming at a boy who works in carry out so I go over and see what's wrong. She was upset because I didn't get her the water immediately and starts screaming at me. I then run back and get her a whole pitcher of water, because she's clearly a thirst ho. She proceeds to scream at me because I didn't get her a son or a fill of Sprite, when they didn't ask and his cup was 3 stroke 4 of the way full. I apologized and went to get the Sprite while alerting my manager of the issue. While I was getting another Sprite her husband gets up and starts screaming and cursing in my manager's face, about 3 inches from her, so they didn't stop yelling and complaining. So my other manager gave them their meal for free and a gift card. Mind you, this was all over water. It took about 3 minutes after I told them I'd get them water for them to start going insane. I ended up apologizing to my other tables for the disturbance, but they were very understanding and apologized on behalf of the psychotic family. I couldn't help but wonder what happens to their son when he doesn't do exactly what they want. Comma my other manager gave them their meal for free and a gift card. This is the part which infuriates me the most, what a spineless idiot. Not a manager, but a kitchen chef in a pizzeria. We occasionally get this lady that orders a pizza then tries to complain about it in order to get it for free. We always deny her and she always with threatens to give us a bad review of Yelp or Beta whoever is unfortunate enough to be on the phone with her. One time, she ordered a pizza with gluten free crust and complained that the crust was too doughy, so she demanded it to be free. Gluten free crusts are as crispy as a cracker when they come out of the oven and are almost the same while we make it. Even if someone didn't bake it in the oven beforehand for whatever reason, it's virtually impossible for it to be doughy. For about a week, all of us would tell each other, make sure that it isn't too doughy as a joke when we had to make gluten free pizzas. I saw an account terminated and their address permanently banned from service by a senior VP. The lady called in to try to restart her service, then proceeded to complain and ask for management when she was told she couldn't. I can't even imagine the amount of complaining she had to have done to get to the senior VP level, since even major escalations only get to a level that's like 3 levels below that. I read the notes and looked at the account, and she had 6 plus service calls every month for 3 plus years. This lady apparently called in almost every day to complain and ask for credits due to her service not working. The address was blocked, and the notes basically said, this address will never get service again. If this lady somehow gets service from this company again, everybody involved will be fired. I had an actual Karen as a manager, two-faced, played favorites and had this annoying nervous laugh she would use at the end of everything she said, as if to punctuate the idiocy of her statement, I think. Ha ha, that we should try it this way, ha ha, because it, ha ha, might, ha ha, work better, yes, she talked just like that. Try dealing with Karen when you're a cop, do you know who my husband is you better not touch me, my husband is so and so yeah okay be well tell me who your husband is on your way to jail, Karen is always racist too, don't you have some black people to arrest, I actually obey the law well Karen assaulting your husband is illegal, so my black partner is going to take you jail now. Or Karen the military officer's wife. My husband is a captain. Where's my salute? Not a manager but I have a few. The worst incident happened at a cafe I used to work at. We had a woman with down syndrome that worked 3 days a week. She is very sweet and helpful and one of our family friends. The town I worked in has a huge influx of tourists in the summer so I'm used to all kinds of people. A man and his wife came in and ordered a smoothie and an iced Americano. 
Because I was trained as a barista I'm aware of the difference between an Americano and coffee but usually I use the term coffee because I found that a lot of customers didn't know the difference or really care as long as they got their caffeine. So when I read back the order I said coffee instead of Americano. He clarified that it was an Americano and not a brew coffee. I told him that we only had an espresso machine so it would definitely be an Americano. I made his wife's smoothie and handed it to the woman with Down syndrome and told her which woman to give it to. A minute or so later she came back with the smoothie. I asked her what was wrong with it because the woman didn't take it. She said she didn't know but the woman refused to take it. I took it out to her and asked what was wrong with it. She said straight up that she didn't feel comfortable with my co-worker taking it out, implying it was because she had special needs. I firmly told her that she was an employee there and was very competent. I then went to make her husband's drink. I made the iced Americano and called his name and said iced coffee out of habit. He sat and looked at me so I said sir, your drink is ready, already irritated by his wife. He came up and said to me I ordered an iced Americano, not an iced coffee kind of exhausted by the two. I told him that it was indeed an iced Americano. He proceeded to explain to me, the trained barista, the difference between a brew coffee and an espresso drink. After I had already clarified previously that we only had espresso, I looked him dead in the eyes and said firmly there are two shots of espresso, water, and ice in this cup. He then replied with a huh and then had the nerve to ask me if my co-worker with special needs had made it. So I told him, not so nicely, that he could take the drink or not and he could also leave my place of work if he would not treat people with respect. My manager only reprimanded me for swearing. I was a house manager, hum, at a big performing arts venue, and I encountered my worst Karen at a Saturday night showing for the Book of Mormon. I still feel rage when I think about it. Karen's problem? Just a young man seated in front of her in his standard size wheelchair, a veteran no less as I later discovered, and his older parents, who were seated next to him in banquet style seats. A bit of background, the banquet seats are what we used when we had mobility requests. We would remove a small, strategically located section of seats to make an empty place for the mobility device, then place the banquet seats for the other ticketed spots. The venue used those specific seats precisely because they were the exact same height as the theater seats. Karen didn't care though. Those people were ruining her view and they needed to go. And no, she wouldn't move to a no-show seat. Didn't I know how much money she spent on these tickets? But when I said I wouldn't move the other patrons, who had also bought the expensive tickets, well then how dare I bring up money. That's hardly the point. And on. And on she ranted, gesturing wildly, with her designer person gold ringed fingers. She ranted through the entire 18 minute intermission while I tried to quietly shut her up somehow. It was excruciating. I even had security on standby. The shrill voice that emanated from her white, toothy maw was a weapon in its own right, enough to make a whistle jealous. The worst part though, is she was so extremely rude that the family of the man with the wheelchair decided to leave anyway. I tried so hard to make other arrangements for them, for free, tickets on another day, or to another show, or even just a refund for that night. They were very kind to me, but just wanted to go home. Meanwhile, Karen got to go back in and watch the rest of the show. Man, frick that entitled B Karen. I hope she has to leave halfway through every show she ever goes to for the rest of her miserable and satisfied life. Who oh boy, this brings me back. So, when I was a younger man I was an assistant manager at Blockbuster Video. For you youngins out there, before Netflix you would have to go this place called a video rental store and actually pay money to rent a movie. Once upon a time they even came on these boxy things called VHS tapes. So, one day I'm working an evening shift and the phone rings. This woman I'll call Karen is on the other end. She says she got a call earlier in the day about some videos being overdue. She was absolutely livid, as if we had urinated on her ancestor's grave by letting her know some movies were overdue. I brought up her account on our computer and sure enough, three movies were still out and were due back a week before. She goes ballistic, absolutely screeching at me over the phone that her daughter rented those movies for a sleepover and had returned them. I check the return bin, nothing. I even walk out to the floor and check the copies on the shelf to see if maybe it's them. For those not in the know, every movie had its own code, no dice. 
Finally, she just screams at me that we're trying to rip her off and she's going to tell her husband who's an attorney and he'll sue us all out of existence. I go about the rest of my shift and lo and behold, about an hour later this woman comes marching in, comes right up to the counter and slams a stack of 3 VHS tapes on the counter before yelling some profanity at the poor clerk. I had witnesses from the other end where I was checking in returned movies. I looked at the stack of movies and sure enough, they were the ones her daughter had rented and returned. Bonus. The next day I was also working there and this man in a suit comes in. Real friendly guy who asks to speak to management. I walk over to chat with him and he tells me that he's a lawyer and he wants to apologize for his wife's behavior. I crap you not he actually said, we're trying to get her under control. The doctor just prescribed her Xanax. That last part gave me a good chuckle. I'm not a manager but I used to work at a cafe bakery and was there when our manager ripped a Karen a new butthole. One of my co-workers was about 18 and had a really crappy home life. He had cigarette burns and scars on his arms from self-harm. A few of the scars were really noticeable and could have possibly been suicide attempts. I don't know. I never pried about them. So this lady, about 50, comes in and orders with what I presume was her friend. My co-worker takes the orders to them. Overall she was being snippy and demanding with him. But the worst experience part comes when she picks up her pizza and rips it apart. And says to him, this isn't even sliced all the way through. You'd think you'd be able to figure that out by now. I swear my manager almost came unglued. I've never seen veins bulge so far out of someone's head before or since. You could tell he was summoning every ounce of his strength not to choke her outright in the middle of the bakery. Donnie, the manager, immediately kicked both women out and told them they weren't welcome back. They asked for the owner when he informed them he was the manager. But when the owner finally arrived he concluded that the women were barred. They threatened to call the cops, but didn't since we gave them their money back. I still can't fathom how anyone could be so insensitive. Holy crap. That reminds me of when my dad had these special kitchen knives that were skin resistant and told me even you couldn't cut yourself with these. I used to work as a manager at a sandwich shop. Our policy for any pickup orders was to not cook their fries until the customer came in so that they have fresh fries. This is always told to the customer on the phone. I had this one bee call in her order and ask me if I could cook the fries immediately so that she didn't have to wait them. I told her I couldn't do that because if she doesn't come in to pick her order up within about 5 minutes, those fries will be soggy and cold. She seemed to understand this. She ends up showing up about 45 minutes after she placed the order and proceeded to yell at me because her fries weren't ready. I explained to her that if I had cooked her fries when she placed the order that they would be very cold and soggy because she took 45 minutes to come pick her order up. She didn't care. She continued to yell at me about how she's a nurse and has no time to wait for the fries. I told her oh well, you either need to wait for them to cook, which takes literally 2 minutes to cook, or leave. She waited. What a bee. I would wait any day for fresh fries versus soggy, cold, sad fries. Honestly, I've only really had one experience so far. I am new to retail and got the job because I ran out of fricks to give. One day, a lady came in the store and went to the Pizza Hut Express. They were out of pan pizzas and closing within a minute of her arriving. She wasn't convinced and came up to me at self checkout and asked for a manager. I just shouted manager without stopping what I was doing and someone came. She explained that she wasn't convinced that the Pizza Hut was out of pan pizzas. The manager explained that they were. She said she didn't believe her. I casually mentioned that they're closed now anyway, so it doesn't matter. She expresses how much she craves a pan pizza. So a co-worker and I explain that there are at least three pizza places nearby, one of which was a full pizza hut, that were still open and served pan pizzas. She really wanted a Target Pizza Hut Express pan pizza, though, but, she stormed off saying she needed to pick up a prescription. None of us had the heart to tell her that the pharmacy closed two hours ago. My worst Karen was a middle-aged woman who I caught trying to switch price labels around on some blocks of cheese. She found a 5 pound label for a multi-pack of chicken breasts, it said chicken breasts on the label, and tried to pull the plastic strip off the shelf to put the new label in place. When I caught her and asked if she needed any help, pro tip, never outright ask a Karen what they're doing. 
She pointed at the blocks of cheese which were £6 and said these were £5 the other week. I politely explained that they were not. It was a different brand of cheese and she said well why are they in the sale bit then? They were not. I again explained that the cheese was not £5 and she walked away muttering to herself. I thought that was that and carried on with my tasks when I heard shouting coming from the till and my staff member rang the management bell and I headed over, knowing it was her. It was. She was facing him and yelling that the manager said I could have them for £5 and he was trying to explain that he needed manager authorization so I approached and asked what the problem was and she immediately said you're not the manager I said I was and I had said no such thing about letting her have the cheese for £5 and she then said listen, I'm a close personal friend of 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 yeah I'm going to stop you right there. I'm the manager and I've never seen you before in my life because at that point she had pee me off. She left the store screeching that she was going to head office about my incompetence followed by our security guard. The next morning there was a round robin email from other branches in the area about a middle aged woman trying to sneak a discount on blocks of cheese. She'd gone to every store in the area just to try to get one pound off some cheese. Years ago I was managing a store in a local pet store chain. I was young and often dismissed as a manager. One night a woman walks up to me holding a normal parakeet cage, about $30, and asks me if she buys the cage can we throw in extra purchase, food, and other accessories. I politely tell her I can't do that but I can get her a discount if she's buying all those items. She instantly flips her crap and starts reading me the riot act, telling me she works retail and she knows I am supposed to do whatever makes the customer happy. This goes on for a short while, never giving me a chance to get a word in. She then sets the cage down and storms out of the store. We all sort of laughed it off, even a few customers who saw it go down saying things like I don't know how you deal with people like that. About a half an hour later my cashier tells me there is an angry woman on the phone, obviously the same woman, wanting to speak to the manager. I pick up the phone and introduce myself. She immediately starts telling me about her awful experience with the rude kid I have working for me. She rehashes the entire situation with all sorts of embellishments mixed in. She says that when she approached the rude kid he was throwing ferrets into the ferret pen from 10 feet away saying I was playing ferret basketball. Never happened. She told me that she simply asked if there was a discount for large purchases because she was buying an expensive parrot cage and all the necessary supplies for her expensive parrot and would be spending well over $500. Again, literally not a single part of that was true. But the rude kid told her that cheap people don't get discounts and if she can afford a $500 cage and a $2k parrot she can pay full price. The entire time I just let her rant on, trying not to laugh. So I finally tell her I can give her corporate's number. She says no she just wants me to know what type of people I have working for me and how I, he, should be fired. So I asked who it was and started describing myself. She confirms and I said well mom, you might want to take the number for corporate and tell them because I the rude kids you talked to, none of what you just told me actually happened. And we have 24 hour surveillance cameras in the store and I can pull up the entire ordeal in case my DM would like to see what really happened. She screamed at the top of her lungs frick you punk and slammed down the phone. We didn't actually have cameras but I knew the bluff was enough. It was quite the satisfying moment. I had many you are speaking to him moments in my old career. But that was the best because she was so batshit. Karen's of Reddit. How's your life as a Karen? I need to speak to this threads manager. I know a Karen at work and she's one of my favorite people to shoot the crap with. She started a couple weeks after me so we've both been here 5 years. Now Carol on the other hand. Honestly, people have a pretty low bar for how they expect me to behave, which is cool. As long as I'm kind to service professionals and don't have peacock hair. I've already surpassed any expectations people have of a Karen. My boyfriend's friends called me Karen in accounting as a joke for a while before they met me. Jokes on them, though. I'm in marketing. Please welcome to the stage Karen from Finance. I'm a Becky, so if any Karens want to have a pity party, I'm down. I've got your back Becky. Signed, Karen. I have a Karen at work who gave me some Christmas chocolates. She is a good Karen. All the Karens must learn to be like this one. 
My friend's mom's name is Karen and once when we were driving, a Karen bit came on the radio, and she got so offended, changed it saying how unfunny, mean, and upsetting it was. When we got out of the car, my friend whispered, such a Karen and we could not stop laughing. Not that funny but it's 15 years later and sometimes we will still send each other Karen memes just saying your my mom would hate this. To be fair, this Karen was like a second mother to me, and a very kind and generous one. I spent so many days and nights at her house. I owe many of my favorite birthday parties to her, and looking back I can't imagine how much money she must have spent on me, all just because of my friendship with her daughter. She never made me feel like a burden, or even like I wasn't family. The most Karen thing about her is her reaction to Karen jokes. You joke about it, but unbeknownst to you she called the radio station later and complained to the manager there. Bro, this thread is giving me a very positive outlook on Karens. Because real Karens wouldn't be on Reddit. The parents of all these fake Karens must have wanted to put care into their caring daughter's names but somehow misspelled Karen. I know a Karen who's a freaking legend. She works with my mum in an office building and whenever we come in on school holidays, she buys us lunch, we do cool crap in the city, etc. 10 stroke 10 would Karen again. Caring Karen. I work for a Karen. She gives me Starbucks gift cards every other week. One of the rare good Karens in the wild. So for once, Karen is the manager. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the Karens you're referring to don't use Reddit. They use Facebook for the church, honey. So many wholesome Karens. I might have to refer to uptight Facebook moms by another name in my head. I know a Karen. She's my friend's mom. She's also my mom's friend. My friend is also my cousin so my mom's friend. Karen, who is also my friend's mom. Karen, is also my mom's sister. Karen, and my aunt Karen. She's addicted to him. Our unexpected myth. I know a Karen on Facebook. The first birthday after I lost my dog she sent me $500 to buy a puppy. I've never met her in my life but she's always been great. Holy crap. That's a great Karen. My mum is a Karen and she is the best. My mum is a Karen and probably the source of the typical Karen. I'm Karen, but I'm not a Karen. Fine you can be a Kevin. I work with Karen. She's the best because she is super crafty she makes her own clothes and shoes. Her nails are always perfectly manicured and she's really good at nail design. She also takes the lead when it comes to events like decorating for the holidays and it always comes out looking amazing. She's a total gearhead and is into racing. She's an amazing cook too. Last time we had a potluck she went all out and made this stuffed shrimp. Karen is also a good mom and such a positive person. I love my work Karen. I'm a Karen, although I go by a nickname usually. I feel like it started with Dane Cook's crappy stand up and then just snowballed. I've come to accept it. I didn't choose a Karen life. The Karen life chose me. Dane Cook was my first thought too. My name is Sharon but sometimes Sharon is Karen. My twin aunts are Sharon and Karen. Sharon is my favorite. Karen can be a real bee sometimes. But when she's not, she's pretty cool. My niece is a Karen. She's 8 going on 39. She is the de facto babysitter. Even her older brother listens to her. The teacher's pet. And the voice of reason. When I asked her what she wants for Christmas, she told me. Books? But remember you have to buy gifts for the babies. Her younger siblings. And your son. When I told her that my brother was coming to visit, she said. If you fight, you have to apologize because he's your brother and it's better to love each other. She gives me directions to her house from her booster seat in the back of the car. Karen is the most serious, conscientious kid in the world. So, when my son and I hang out with her, we go to the children's museum or the park or the pool. Somewhere she can let it all out and be a silly little kid. My pediatrician was a Karen. She was kind, helpful, and supportive to me and my parents when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as a child. Great, I divorced my husband and got custody of the freaking kids. Classic Karen. It, turns out Karen isn't so bad after all. 
I'm a Karen. You know that activity you do in grade school where you write an adjective for every letter of your name? There weren't many options for K except for kindness. Nicknames growing up from friends and grown-ups included Caring Karen, Kerber, etc. I've always associated my name with an expectation to be kind. Karens are subconsciously trained to be a good people, no matter what the memes say. I have a K name. 2. I remember when we do that game where we'd introduce ourselves and come up with our favorite thing for that letter of the alphabet. It was always kittens and kit kat bars for me, or kites, but I'm not that into kites. One of my best friends is a Karen. She's a good Karen. Somewhere between a Kathy and a Susan. Ah, the 60s and 70s. A great time for all the legendary two syllable names. Karen, Kathy, Linda, Susan, Sharon, Cheryl, Patty, Tammy, Laura, Donna, Lisa, Cindy, Debbie, Terry, Shelley, Paula. I'm a Karen that looks apparently looks more like a Jennifer. I prefer to not correct people. I also love all my friends that send me Karen memes BC they make me laugh. So, I guess I'm okay. Karen life is not too bad. I've never asked to speak to a manager or anything any other meme has suggested. I actually have a handful of friends named Karen and they don't seem to be the types to ask for a manager either. I think we, as a name, are a dying breed though. Someone please name their baby Karen so we can live on. A. Karen complain. My friend is Karen and she's the sweetest woman I know and practically a patron son of cats. Also has many health issues and I wish she could magically get better. She doesn't deserve any of what she puts up with on a daily basis. I'm a Karen, but I'm not the kind of Karen you're talking about. I hate confrontation and conflict, so I would rather die than ask to see the manager. My mother is a Karen. She didn't abort me and fed me for 22 years. 10 stroke 10. My boss is called Karen. She bought me toast this morning and refused to take money from me. She's a great boss. My stepmom is a Karen. She makes my dad happy, and that makes me happy. I'm a Karen. I didn't take the kids. Unless you count 50 stroke 50 custody, I don't ask to speak to the manager. I don't go in my car. I really can't complain. I love my family and would do anything for them. I work with autistic kids, teaching them life skills. There's one person that calls me Kariba. So, all in all, I'd say I'm a successful Karen. I'm a Karen. 35 years old. I've always found that most people I meet upon telling them my name have either an Aunt Karen or their mom's name is Karen. I even have an Aunt Karen myself. She married my uncle after I was born. I have met no other Karens my age ever. I always wish I would. My husband claims Karen will make a name come back. I highly doubt it. I laugh at all the Karen memes as I hope they are referring to a group of women older than myself lol. Keep the memes coming. I work at a coffee shop and we have a regular Karen that comes in every day. I always talk to her and ask her how she's doing and about her family etc. She came in the week before Christmas and handed me a $20 tip saying Merry Christmas and thank you so much for always asking how I am she's a good Karen. Hiya Chad. I feel for you Karens of Reddit. Honestly, it's kind of funny, and I try not to take it personally. Karen was a very common name when I was born. In high school, the administration once put all of the Karens and Kathys on the same bus to an event, and most of the Karens I know have been nice people. I'm a Karen and my brother is a Kevin. Reddit memes suck sometimes. People at work who I haven't met in person always expect me to be much older than I am. And on Reddit, the soccer mom Karen meme doesn't make any sense because Karen was most popular as a name in the 50s and 60s, and more popular even in the 40s and 70s, so the typical Karen's kids are adults. Old person who can't use computers fair enough, but ironically I'm the first person my 50 and 10 year co-workers go to for computer help so it's not me. Also, People always confuse me for an Aaron since that is a more common name for under 40s. Or Kate or Sharon because I sat next to other women with that name. My dog's name is Karen and she's a good girl. My mom is a Karen. She raised three kids all by herself. And they are all well adjusted adults doing good things. So, the Karen I know is a badass. 
theory, the Karen hate was started by the buttholes they got divorced from. Literally the only person I can think of that doesn't like my mom, whose name is Karen. This might be right. Source, I'm Karen. Have bad taste in men. I get tons of Karen memes and get told gosh Karen, you're so stupid often but other than that, it's going great. I'm a real life Karen. I think it's funny that my name has become internet shorthand for horrible, rude 50 plus year old woman because I'm a millennial and have never asked to see a manager in my entire life. Managers of Reddit past or present. What is your favorite I am the manager story? I worked at a restaurant where you filled in a ticket with all the ingredients you wanted on your pasta pizza salad. There were large boards above a counter explaining how to order correctly. Once customers filled out their ticket they could bring it to the register. During a weekend lunch rush with a line of at least 25 people, a woman comes up to the counter and tells our cashier what she wants. When the cashier told her that he needed a ticket she got annoyed about the inconvenience, all while the line builds up behind her. She demands to be given a ticket and begins filling it out right there. Seeing this, I come up to the cashier and tell him to ring up the people behind her while she takes her sweet time making the important decision of which pasta sauce she wants. She finally finishes, pays, and sits with her gaggle of companions. Later she comes up to me and tells me that my behavior of having the waiting customers pay before her was extremely rude. I respond by telling her we try to make sure every customer gets speedy service and her holding up the line because she didn't read our large signs was also rude to all of the other customers. She tells me that she'd like to speak to the manager to complain about me, with a gleeful, and maybe slightly evil, grin I reply, you already did, I'm the manager, the look on her face when she realized she wasn't going to get to be and feel vindicated about my mistreatment of her was lovely and even though this was years ago, it still brings me joy. It's the little things that are the most important. What a beautiful story. Worked as a supervisor in an optical retail store, we got issued name badges with our first name and job title written on them, and as I was only recently promoted I put on my badge saying optical assistant, with my supervisor badge in my pocket. This isn't a massive issue as normally when dealing with customers if you tell them you're a manager they respect that. Normally, enter customer C that doesn't adhere to this rule. They had a problem that I was very easily able to offer a solution to, but was absolutely adamant they wanted to speak to a manager. C. Can you please get me your manager? Me. Actually I am a manager. How can I help? C. No. Get me your manager. You know. The person in charge? Me. Mom I am a supervisor and I'm more than able to help you with any complaints. Unfortunately the only other manager in is taking care of yesterday's banking and is unable to leave. C. That's not good enough for me. Go get the manager. So at that point I realized I didn't have the correct badge on. So I turned around, switched them over and turned back to the customer. It's me. Hi, I'm the manager. How can I help? She stormed out and put in a complaint against me. So worth it. Automotive industry here. Quick lube style place. Franchise where owner only owns two locations. I'm the service center manager of one location, and area manager over both. Customer rolls up and asks for an oil change. She drives her van in, hops out, and walks around the side of the building. Once we finished the service she walks back around and gets in the van. She starts to pull the van out and starts yelling about her window, saying we broke it and that it wouldn't roll up now. I immediately pulled up the camera footage clearly showing the window was down when she pulled in, and she didn't want to hear it. She promptly asked for the manager. I explained that I was the manager. She demanded to speak to my regional manager. I explained that I was the only person she'd speak to, as the owner is fairly absent and doesn't handle petty store level complaints. She called the corporate 1-800 number on the back of our invoices. Because we're a franchise, that complaint gets typed out and sent right back to my email inbox with a phone number to contact the customer. She wasn't pleased to hear my voice calling her to shut her down again. God I wish you had a company phone that just forwarded straight to you. I'll call the 1800 number. Ring ring ring. Hey, I'm still the manager. And number. I used to work for a particularly large ISP doing tech support. 
One day the guy working next to me was dealing with a particularly rude business customer. The business customers were usually treated like kings but this guy was having a particularly hard time even getting a word in. Eventually he put up his hand to motion the supervisor come talk to the customer. Right then the owner of the company happened to be walking by with another one of the execs. I've met the guy a few times at the company social events and he is a really down to earth employee friendly boss. He asked what the issue was with his customer and after it was explained he took the headset and picked up the line. After listening for about 4-5 minutes he said very flatly that's never going to happen. Especially not when you have an attitude like a 13 year old girl. Again listening for a minutes before he said I don't have a manager. I own this company and I don't have to listen to this crap from an butthole like you and neither do my employees. I'm terminating your account with us. He hung up and I watched him disable this guy's account and add a note to the file. Customer is in butthole. Do not reinstate account. Boss. Then he just handed back the headset and carried on about his day. Your boss is awesome. When I was in high school I worked at a candle store in the mall. For the most part, everything was returnable for store credit unless it was a sale item or holiday specific stuff. I had a woman giving me the hardest time about not being able to return something that had obviously been used for an event and she no longer needed. She asked for the manager, who was there but wasn't satisfied with her answer. She went on to ask that we contact someone else about it and it just happened that we had a visitor from head office at the store that day. Still not happy with getting the same response from all of us. She went on that general disgruntled customer rant of this place is terrible and I'm going to tell everyone how terrible it is and no one is going to shop here and in the best move I've ever seen. The woman from head office dragged a ladder out into the middle of the mall walkway and insisted that the woman start telling people about her experience right then and there. The woman quickly shut up and left. It was beautiful. Oh how I wish more corporate types did this. Got a phone call from one of my salespeople. Guy wanted an item for the same price as Best Buy. Except Best Buy didn't have them in a stock on their website or in store. I checked. Plus, we don't have a price match guarantee. So I denied the price match. Got another phone call about 20 minutes later from the same salesperson. Sounding frizzled. For the same price match. I tell him to hold on. And decide to take a walk. So I show up and the guy is still there. And three of my guys are standing around with that I just got yelled at for 20 minutes look I've had on my own face far too often. I walk over and ask the customer what was the matter. I then make a big show of scanning the item and checking Best Buy's website and checking our internal pose system before sadly declaring that. Gee. I sure would like to price match the item but. Unfortunately. I cannot. Sorry. How would you like to pay today, sir? Guy freaks the frick out, yelling about how ridiculous it all is and how we're violating our price match guarantee and how he's going to email corporate. Unfortunately, sir, we do not have a price match guarantee, and I'm afraid we are unable to match that price in this particular instance. Now, would you like to pay for this item now, sir? I saw a price match guarantee on your website I am gonna email corporate. Sir, I'm afraid we have no price guarantee on our website. You may be confusing us with another company, sir. If you'd like to think about your purchase, we can always give you a price quote. You do have a price guarantee I saw IT on your website you're being very unreasonable. Sir, perhaps you'd like to think about your purchase and complete this transaction at a different time? This is freaking ridiculous. And he took out his phone, snapped a picture of my face and a picture of my name tag and stalked out, over a $12 price difference. So I told the salesperson he could take an unlogged break, and I went back to my office. I looked up the guy's account, and then googled his name, a VP at some tech company in California. I put a note in his account, good luck getting a return authorization now, butthole. I informed the director of sales as soon as possible, because sire, uh, he giggled when I got to the picture taking part of the story. Your favorite corporate coffee shop. A lot of the times I have a headset on to listen to the drive through as well in case they need help taking an order or grabbing something. So I listen to all the customer interactions. Usually the customer will get upset about something, ask for a manager, and then when I have to go to the window to talk to the customer, I have my headset on with me, listen to what they said happened, and will tell them okay but that's not what I heard on the headset, but if you want. I can also pull the recording as well. They leave. 
not my story, but my parents. They owned a franchise deli some 12 years ago. My mom was there full time making things run smoothly and my dad would be there sometimes to help out when he wasn't working his tech job. Well this lady came in one time and ordered her food. When it arrived, she claimed that the kitchen made it incorrectly. My mom apologized for the inconvenience and calmed her meal as well as gave her a certificate for a free sandwich next time the lady came in. So the lady comes in again, orders her food, and again claims it was made incorrectly. My mom again apologizes and gives her another coupon for a free sandwich. This happened probably one or two more times. My dad had heard about it and was convinced they were just being scammed by this lady. Well, the next time the lady comes in, my dad happens to be working the kitchen. Sandwich lady comes through the drive through and orders. My mom recognizes her and so to make sure everything is perfect, my dad makes her food himself and gives it to her. A couple minutes later, the lady calls the store to say her food has been made wrong again. My mom sets the phone down and goes to my dad and says the lady is on the phone and says you made her food wrong again. My dad says you tell that bi didn't make her food wrong and that she is never welcome in this restaurant again. My mom picks up the phone and says and the lady goes I heard that. You tell that boy that he is fired and my mom responds with, Mom, the boy is the owner of the restaurant. The lady hung up and never returned. My parents both have a long laugh about that whenever they are thinking of all the stupid bulls that went on with that restaurant. P. I was the GM of a beautiful new big name hotel at 2324. My AGM was a white woman in her 50s, me being mixed. Many occasions occurred where I was speaking with a guest over an issue and they demand to speak to a manager only for me to say I am the manager. No, the real manager please. The look on their faces when my co-worker told them I was in fact her boss with a huge smile. Luckily my AGM was a kick butt woman and we got a kick out of this. A couple years ago I had been given a great opportunity to open a new restaurant. I was in my mid 20s and this was the first chance I had been given to completely run the show. It was our opening weekend, so I called up one of my old managers who's also a good friend and asked if he would come help me for the first week, which he happily agreed to. So it's Saturday night, every table is filled and the wait is over an hour. Things were going better than I expected, although I honestly wasn't sure what to expect. Myself and my friend, who's about twice my age were just walking the dining room, spending the majority of our evenings clearing plates and talking with customers. Everyone was cheerful and many commented on how happy they were to have a new restaurant in the area. Then came the first problem customer in our young history. When I cleared her plate and asked how everything was, she snapped about how they had been waiting 5 whole minutes for the server to pick up their credit card. I told her I could help her with that and reached for the card she put on the table. A look of complete disgust came over her face and she snatched the card back and put it in her purse. Okay, cool. A couple minutes later a server asked me if I picked up the card. I told them no. She put it in her purse and that she was ready to give it to her. That's when it went off the rails. This woman insisted that I had taken her card and was demanding I return it. I stopped back over and told her I watched her put it back in her purse which she vehemently denied and started to be unreasonably loud. She began demanding I find her card now, or she was calling the police, and actually stood up and was stomping her foot like a child. This actually threw me off as I started to wonder if in the chaos of the night, I actually did take her card. So I look everywhere, no card. I go back and ask her again, to please look in her purse. She refuses. My friend sees this happening and comes over to try and assist. It was at that point that she stood up, looked him straight in the eyes and said your filthy boss boy lost my credit card and you better find it now now it started to make sense. She was looking down on me, and that's why she didn't want me to touch her card because she assumed I was some sort of low life. He explained to her that I was actually the manager, her behavior was appalling, and asked her to look in her purse for the card. What a surprise, there it was. She put her head down, paid, and left without saying a word. Never saw her again. We had this insane and rude as heck old woman screaming and ranting she couldn't use a coupon for something the coupon was not even for. We stood there arguing a good 5 minutes holding the line up. Her grown granddaughters were with her trying to call her down and embarrassed as heck. 
Usually, I would have just given in and let her use the dang thing but she was being so rude I was not about to help her. She asked me to speak to my manager and I said I was the manager and she didn't like that at all and said well I'll just go to the other location in town they will take my coupon and I said not if you don't buy what IT is for. She left. Few minutes later we run out of a product we need and I call other location and they have some we can borrow so I head over to get it. I walk in the store and who do I see about to get in line for some food? The old coupon lady. So I wash my hands, glove on up and jump on the food line. The lady walks up to the counter and I smile huge and say hello. How can I help you? Her granddaughters both gasp and go oh god here we go and the look on the grandma's face was priceless. She did not try the coupon again lol. Timing could not have been better. They had to be tripping out lol. 21 22 years old. Low rung manager of a movie theater. Guy tearing tickets took a lunch break so I am tearing tickets. Lady comes in, like an hour before her show is supposed to start. The end of the film is still going on, and she is holding what I can only guess is an ice cream sundae made for 4 people. I tell her we aren't letting in for that film yet, and she can't bring an outside food into the theater. She gets into a tizzy and tells me that she always, I say always brings food into the theater and no one has ever stopped her. I'm an impetuous 21 stroke 22 year old making 20 cents over minimum wage. So I tell her it's been a rule since before World War 2. You should get out more. She says I want to talk to the manager. I say sure thing. I'll go up to the office and he will come down. And then I walked up to the office. Checked my hotmail. I'm old. And came down and told her I'm the manager and she can't come in with the outside food. Ended up giving her a refund for her ticket after she said I know the owner of this theater and he will fire you. It would have been nice if I had been fired. I would have gotten unemployment. Was the business manager for a local computer store several years back. But this story is about the main manager. Guy comes in and is furious because his Mac won't work. Looks like liquid damage. Swears up and down it's because we sold him a faulty machine a few weeks back. He wants a full refund and is screaming in my face about it. Finally, he says I want to speak to your manager. Cause ain't no goddamned woman no crap about computers. I smile a little. Tell him no problem. Step in the back and grab my manager. And out walks a tiny little Hispanic girl. Heavily pregnant. Big smile on her face. Cause she's been watching the cameras. He spluttered out something about asking his kids about spilling stuff on his computer and is never seen again. I manage a medical clinic. Our usual receptionist was out that day so I said I would cover front desk, which is no big deal. We were looking at getting some building work done and I'd arranged quotes from a couple of builders and was trying to arrange an appointment with one more. A guy rang the intercom and told me he had an appointment with us. Thinking he was a patient, I buzzed him in and tried to find him in the diary but couldn't see him anywhere. He comes in and says, Hi, I have a meeting here at 3pm. Me. Hi, let me try to find you in the diary. What's your name please? Guy. It's boring name. Me. Hum. I can't see anything in the diary. Are you a patient or is this a business meeting? I assumed he may have been a surgeon or doctor through to meet one of our clinicians. Guy. It's a business meeting. Your boss asked me to give her a quote for some building work. Me. Oh. I'm sorry. Clinic boss is out of the office at the moment as she has another meeting. She didn't let me know you were coming. I can reschedule for you if you'd like. Sorry about this. Guy. Sighs irritably. No. I have already scheduled this meeting with her and spoken with her. Are you sure you're reading that diary properly? She's specifically asked me to come. I don't think she'll be impressed with you when she finds out she won't let me through. Me. As I said, clinic boss is out of the office. Guy. No. My meeting is with the manager. I sleep when he won't. Me. Ah. Sticks hand over the desk to shake. Nice to meet you. My name is I sleep when he went and we've never spoken to each other or arranged a meeting. Perhaps you haven't read your diary properly? We never did have that meeting. No specific story but I'm a 20 year old female and I'm a manager at a hotel. I work first shift so I hear all the complaints. It's my favorite when people are just complaining left and right just finding something to get a discount off their bill and if I don't give them a big enough discount they get even more mad. They always demand to speak to my manager. I inform them I am the manager. 
some reason they never believe me but one time someone asked me if I was lying and I said nope my name's up on the wall. Manger at a call center. I'd get asked all the time if I could transfer to another manager. The answer was always, as I am perfectly capable of handling your situation I am unable to transfer you to someone else at my level. You can however feel free to end this conversation, call back, go through the ranks and maybe get someone else who will provide the same information. This normally led to a rant on how privileged they are and how garbage this is which led me to respond an empathizing statement along the lines of if I did this to myself I'd be pretty angry to is there anything else I can address for you? My manager is very young, 24 if I recall correctly, and frequently gets people telling him that he's too young to be a manager. Go to love hospitality. You're too young to be a manager. Well you're too old to be a little b yet here we are. But ending one night, these two girls come in, treat me like garbage, run me ragged and don't tip. Afterwards, they come up to me, each with resumes in tow and ask for the manager on duty. I had the biggest and brightest smile when I told them it was me, and held my hand out for the resumes. They paled and went downstairs, lounge upstairs, dining room downstairs, and I figured they would leave. I got paged to the front hostess stand, by the hostess, and there were the girls. They thought that I was lying to them. It was beautiful. I'm guessing they didn't get the job. I'm 25 and store manager at a textile store. One day there is an older couple. You can clearly see that these individuals live on the posh side of town. They are shopping for some new upholstery fabrics and like the one I help them find but the color is not quite right. The lady asks me to just place an order for the color she would like. I reply that I cannot order items I don't carry. She does not like my answer. Measures me with a glance. I have a lot of tattoos and stretched lobes and says she would like to speak with the manager or somebody that works there every day. Like me working there is a freaking community service. I reply that I am the manager and if she can't find anything she likes she can take her business elsewhere. Well you have tattoos so you obviously aren't trustworthy yes. I was the customer care manager in charge of sales support for a medium sized software company. We had 3 tiers of support and then I was the last escalation point. If the VP above me, or anyone else above him got any sales complaints they would simply forward them to me. When I had time, I would help the tier 3 team and answer a few emails. When doing that I would use a generic email signature without a title. If anyone replied demanding to speak to the manager then I would reply the same thing but I would add my formal email signature that had my title. Since it was email I never got to see the customer's reaction. But I always enjoyed it. There were a few instances where customers accused me of lying about being the manager and telling me that they would get my fired when they get in touch with the real manager. Not my story, but my buddies. We were working at a club, and he dragged a guy out. The guy was belligerent, but once outside, he stopped fighting and transitioned to being a yippie dog that barks, yet runs away when challenged. He was about 5 feet 6 inches and skinny, but my buddy was Samoan, about 6 feet 1 inches, and over 400 pounds. Here's the conversation that followed. Former customer, I'm going to get you fired tomorrow. Bouncer, okay, have a good night. Former customer, I know the manager. Now the chief of security, and the GM are standing there, but they won't get involved in a legit removal unless there's a danger. Bouncer, what's the manager's name? Former customer, bouncer's name, bouncer, you know him? Former customer, yeah, he's my boy, bouncer, can you describe him? Former customer, yeah, he's a big Samoan dude. The actual manager and the GM were doing their best to keep a straight face, as is my buddy who is standing toe to toe with the dude he claims to know, and the only person of Samoan descent on staff, my buddy. Constantly the professional just said that he'd be waiting for the call. Later that night, we told the rest of the crew to a lot of laughter, and the manager made my buddy do the closing duties. Children of I want to talk to your manager parents, what has been your most embarrassing experience? My mom has been this person regularly throughout my life but I do have one positive story with it. She and I went to eat at Portillo's when I was a teenager and we sat in the back of the restaurant where it was more private so we can eat in peace. 
About 10 minutes into our meal two people come into the empty area and sit down two tables away from us. Turns out it was a manager and an employee that was getting written up. The manager was being a complete shat towards the employee criticizing and belittling them. My mom put down her food and walked over and started yelling at the manager for being such an butthole. She went on a rant about how rude and wrong it was of him to do this in front of the public two tables away from customers and really let him have it. She demanded the phone number of the manager above him and we left after she received it. I was pretty embarrassed at the time but as I got older I realized that she was standing up for that employee and how wrong that manager really was. I'm not 100% sure what she did with that phone number because I lived with my dad and I had to go home after that meal. Props to her. Also yum. Portillus. Okay, so we were going to a theme park in the capital of the country. I must have been around 19, which makes my one sister 16, and the youngest around 9. My dad had been planning this for a year, and we were psyched to go. After you go into this place, you see a huge lake, and on each side there are several shops, a restaurant there, a souvenir shop there, and also, there is a builder bear shop. This shop is not a part of the park itself, but it does have an entrance from the park. Anyway, my dad didn't have custody of my sister at the time, and only saw her very sporadically. This was by his own choice since his anxiety meant he couldn't care for her properly. She lived with a foster family. This was one of maybe three times a year he got to actually take her somewhere, so this trip was a big deal. He told her she could have one thing from the park. Whatever she wanted he would pay for it. And, being a nine-year-old girl, she said she wanted a Build-A-Bear. My dad was unfamiliar with the concept of Build-A-Bear, so he didn't know that the price of the bear isn't the total price. On top of it comes the clothes, the shoes etc. So the shop person takes my sister through the whole thing. You know, stuffing, putting the heart in etc. And rings up the total. My dad totally lost it. Like, red in the head. Screaming at this poor girl in the shop lost it. And I felt so embarrassed. Firstly, this girl didn't make the prices. Secondly, this was the trip of the year. It was all four of us for the first time in forever. And thirdly, you don't yell at people like that. I get that he was angry, since he didn't know the process, and felt cheated. And also, he felt backed into a corner, since he had promised my sister that she could have anything. But you don't do that, ever. Luckily, the rest of the trip went by without a hitch. And my youngest sister doesn't remember this happening. She has two builder bears now, and she named each of them after one of her sisters. Ugh. This sounds a bit like my dad growing up. We didn't go on a lot of vacations, and the ones we did were great except he'd constantly complain about the cost of things. I get that we were poor. I get that things are overpriced in tourist areas, but what I don't want to repeat from my childhood experience is the constant complaining when we are supposed to be having a good time. Not my parents, but I was once out to dinner with my brother-in-law and his family. Our meals all came out at almost random times instead of all together. My brother-in-law demanded to talk to the manager because it was unacceptable that food come out at different times and he said something about how he hopes they don't expect us to pay for the meal. He gave a big speech about how we came out so we could eat together. And he knows this is unacceptable because he used to be a waiter, etc. I was mortified because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. My mom constantly does this, but one time really sticks out. We went to a local Mexican restaurant and as we were paying for the food she tried to use a coupon. The cashier said they wouldn't accept the coupon and my mom was furious. She demanded that the manager come out and accept the coupon. She caused a massive scene in the restaurant and it lasted at least 5 minutes. As the cashier was getting the manager, I decided to look at the coupon. It was for a totally different Mexican restaurant in the area and my mom wasn't wearing her glasses. The cashier and manager both came back. My mom apologized, and they ended up accepting the coupon. My dad would sometimes do this at restaurants if the server was too slow or the food was wrong. Especially multiple times in the same meal. He was totally right in being frustrated, because sometimes this was extreme. But we all hated it. The worst time was when we were in our favorite restaurant. My mom literally said, I'm not doing this, and gathered up the three kids and we went to the car. Sounds like your dad was a bit of a dong. Ask your mom. 
my mom once called Domino's regional corporate office or some crap because a pizza I ordered for her, that I paid for, was too expensive. She did get 4 free pizza vouchers out of it but I'm so glad I was not around for the embarrassment of it all. I ordered it online from my job in the next state. Why? Because she wanted pizza. We traveled a lot when we were younger and would skip lines at the airport since we were kids. But now we were all in our early teens and my mom faked having a heart condition to skip the long line to get on the airplane. Flight attendant would have none of it and told us to go back to the end of the line. I still remember the smiles and looks of everyone there. And you see everyone again for the rest of the flight. About the only thing my dad and I have in common is we like to go thrifting. Garage sales, estate sales, antique stores, and charity thrift shops. Thing is, we do it for different reasons. I do it for the fun of finding something unusual and offbeat. Dad does it because he likes to find bargains. To be one up on the suckers who didn't know what they had. So I was mortified when dad went to the charity shop checkout and bitched for 10 minutes about being overcharged 50 cents. Left him in the store alone. When he finally came out, I went in and dropped 5 bucks in the donation jar and apologized for my butthole father. Not long ago my mom asked to treat my wife and I to lunch at Outback Steakhouse. We get there and order. My mom orders iced tea with extra lemon. Tea shows up with one lemon. Usually no big deal, right? Just ask for more. Well, instead of doing that my mom turns to the waiter and says what? No extra lemon? You fail as a waiter. No brownie points for you. The dude sits there for a moment and then says rather flatly I'll be right back with more lemon. I turn to my mom and I'm like, that's how you get your food spit in. You've just sent the message that this will be a crappy tipping table and he's going to totally focus elsewhere. She argues that well it should have inspired him to work harder to impress us. I think from that point I just mentioned that from his end, his odds of making money are now higher at some other table. It's just how people work. Well, she goes to the bathroom and cries. She comes back and makes some super complicated order. I texted my wife who was sitting right next to me and say this dude is going to butcher that order on purpose. Food comes out. Ours is correct and perfect. Hers is all fricked up. Basically a totally wrong order. She asks for it to be fixed. A bit more subdued this time. It comes out technically correct but obviously carelessly prepared cooked. I chuckle inside. Here's the insane part. After all of this she turns to us and says I was right about that waiter. He sucks at his job. It's like no. Dude, your behavior made them not give a frick about you. After being a total butthole and paying the price she walked away feeling validated and haughty. I slipped in a nice tip with a sorry for my mom note. You've just sent the message that this will be a crappy tipping table and he's going to totally focus elsewhere. Reading this, I was fairly confident you meant he's going to totally freak us elsewhere but the dictation shows the less profane option. My mom came to my school because she thought I was lying about what I got on my sats. She didn't think I was that smart. No one in my school would give her that information because they didn't have to. She got to my principal and said, I want to speak to your manager in front of me. He refused and they argued for a while. The principal knew I was an okay guy and the score I told my mother was legit. It was really embarrassing though. It was at a TGI Fridays and Katie, TX. This waiter was amazing. He was working 8 tables that I could count and was managing all of them flawlessly. Drinks never got below 1 stroke 3 RD full at any table. He was always attentive and prompt. Friendly. Just a textbook example of the perfect waiter. He impressed my dad so much that my dad asked if he could speak to a manager. Of course, the waiter immediately asks if anything is wrong. Since that's the only time someone asks, my dad tells him no. It's to make sure that management knows what excellent service he's providing. The waiter thanks us and says he'll get a manager over as quickly as he can. We wait for about 10 minutes before this middle-aged grease ball of a manager saunters over and starts asking my dad how the waiter screwed up. My dad is not the most patient of people, and we were kinder in a hurry to get home, so the 10 minute wait was rubbing him wrong. But when the manager immediately acted like the guy was a screw up, my dad lost it. He told the manager that the waiter had done everything perfectly, and that's why he tipped the guy $15 on a $35 ticket. 
He also went on to say that the manager needed to be more respectful of his staff and gave the guy an butt chewing for presuming that the employee had screwed up. Before that moment, I thought that my sister and I were the only ones he would scream at when he was upset. It was somewhat embarrassing to see my dad yell at this guy, but he did it for a good reason. I remember when I was like 6 my whole family, all 6 of us, went to the dollar store. I don't remember much but I remember when we were in the car about to go home my mom was looking at the receipt and she noticed that the cashier gave them $1 less in change than they were supposed to. My mom was furious and made us all go back inside. She started yelling at the teenage girl cashier about how they're bad people and this is wrong etc etc. Then the girl said something like okay geez and then rolled her eyes while giving back the correct change. This made my mom flip. She started screaming at the top of her lungs about how they're evil and how she needs to fix her attitude and stuff like that. Another one was when we recently had a fire in our house. A bunch of ash and fire extinguisher stuff got all over the house and we got a cleaning company to clean the house. It was like two dudes and two girls. IDK what exactly triggered my mom but apparently she didn't like the way they were cleaning. She started yelling at them and lecturing them that they should know how to clean. Especially the girls because they're female. She then showed them how to do it whole continuing to yell at them. A lot of the bad outbursts were the same way she treated us when she got mad. She's got a lot calmer since then though. Well when I was 10, my mom got a phone for Christmas. And it had a warranty on it. A little later my mother threw it on the ground and called the company asking for a full refund plus a new phone because they gave me a broken one. After a few weeks, a company staff came to our house and asked my mum what happened. She said that the phone you sold us was broken and that I was heartbroken. He gave us a refund but not another phone. My mum started yelling and told him that she would call the police for harassing me. She never did. Recently I asked her about it and she said I have no memory of any of that happening. When I was in high school I worked at McDonald's. One year I skipped sports day and decided to work instead, because money. I was working in the kitchen when one of the cafe staff came out saying some crazy lady wanted to speak to the manager. I had to witness none other than my own mother call my manager a BBY face tea and go off about the cafe staff. I had to hide in the dry stock until she left. Oh god I have so many. My personal favorite is the Dairy Queen drive through incident. My mom thought she was being overcharged 12 cents and freaked out at the poor Dairy Queen drive through dude. He was probably in high school and here's my adult mom screaming at him for overcharging her like 12 cents. Some of her exact words were are you on crack? What the frick is wrong with you? I can't believe this is happening right now. You're wasting my time. ETC ETC. The usual flip out. Also, she mentioned her work. She loves bringing up that she works at a certain big business. As if that gives her more authority to be a B to people. But the Dairy Queen incident was special. Because just before going to get ice cream, my best friend and I had spent some quarters on giant fuzzy mustache stickers. So there we are in the back seat, rubbing our giant fake mustaches and staring at this kid getting screamed at by my mom. Dairy Queen dude was holding in laughter the entire time. I hope our mustaches made the raging mom incident less terrifying for him. Oh and she did demand the manager who just shrugged her off and didn't care. I wonder how much spit and food we have ate because of her. My dad is a pretty big hothead and thinks yelling loudly at customer service employees will solve things. So one time I brought my laptop into a Best Buy for a quick fix. They said I could come get it the next day after it was finished. We show up the next day and they give me a laptop that is 100% not mine. I just let them know politely that there's been a mistake and it's not my computer. They apologize and go looking for mine. 10 minutes later they can't find it. Q rage machine father you better find his laptop or there are going to be problems. No mention of what kind of problems just one of those I'm screaming it sounds threatening sentences. They explain they will keep looking and call me when they have found it but that they will call me every day with an update. I'm totally fine with this being a relatively laid back person. I was only worried I won't have a laptop for my first week of college. 
Anyways they called every day and every day my father would get on the phone and yell about how unbelievably stupid you'd have to be to lose a computer in the store this happened for about 4 days. Every time they would get off the phone with my father I would call them back myself to apologize for that and calmly say don't worry about it I'm sure it'll turn up soon. Guy on the phone was very gracious I wasn't screaming at him and told me if they didn't find it by end of day tomorrow I could come in and pick a laptop and they would write it off to replace mine. Well they never found my computer but I did get a much nicer one for free. Which I honestly think had I not called to apologize on my father's behalf every day I wouldn't have been given the option to chose any laptop to replace it. I'm super curious as to where your laptop went. When I was around 6 or 7 and we had been driving all day through Florida to see my grandma. Because of various travel hangups we ended up getting to the hotel at 3am to discover that there were no pillows in our room. My dad took myself and my mom down there and asked the concierge what he was going to do about it. The man said he didn't know what was to be done because all the extra pillows were for guests. He actually asked what if someone needs them this is why my dad blew up pointing out that that exact situation was happening in that moment, and started going off on this guy. First time I ever heard my dad curse. When I was 10 or 11 years old, my whole family, two brothers, mom and dad, had all been going to the same nice old lady for haircuts for a few years. She usually did cuts for all three boys consecutively. We got to know her pretty well as she was super chatty. My mom was, and is, very organized and always called in a few days in advance to schedule appointments. So she called in and a new receptionist answered the phone and took her appointment down. Or so the receptionist said. We arrived, and my mom learned that the receptionist had not written down the appointment. We would have to wait a few minutes while our favorite stylist finished with her current client. My mom somewhat calmly said, well, if it's not written down, I guess we aren't coming back, then promptly left with us. The stylist even sent us a card a few days later. My mom had none of it. I think my mom was having a bad day. Spent 2 hours in the lobby of the MGM Grand in Vegas circa January 1999. We had arrived with family friends to attend a hairstylist convention. Friends mom owned a salon and mine managed it, and we discovered our family suites had a window view of their dumpster area about a minute after walking into the room. Cue my mother storming back down to the lobby and demanded the head manager at the front desk switch our rooms immediately. Watching her make a scene and get even angrier once security was threatened on her was mortifying. I was 10, tired and embarrassed, and just wanted us all to have fun. Luckily the head manager offered a vacant presidential suite for all of the trouble after getting my mother to calm down. Looking back I realize he did it just to shut her up and restore calm back to the lobby for other guests. Up to this day, I am overly nice to retail and food service workers to compensate for her behavior even though she's not even around anymore. I never want to be that person. Brother, 13. Sister, 9. Cousin 1. 10. Cousin 2. 11, and I, 11, went to go eat at the nearby DQ by our house. Brother orders first and gets ice cream. The rest of us get burgers. Brother regrets his order and asks to trade but none of us wanted ice cream. So he decides to ask the cashier to switch his order. I tell him he can't do since he already ate some of it but he ignores me and asks anyways. They say no because since he ate some, brother gets mad and walks home and the rest to eat our food. And then, oh boy, my mom arrives, pee off, and asks to speak with the manager. Manager comes up and says they can't switch his order because he already ate some of it. Mom waves the ice cream in manager's face demanding to switch his order. Again, she says no. I'm super embarrassed and focus on eating my food. Now I didn't see exactly what happened but cousin one did and his jaw drops and says something along the lines of, your mom just shoved the ice cream at the lady's face we all look back and poor manager lady had ice cream all over her face and hair. Mum grabs brother by the arm and nearly sprinted out of the store, of the store, of the store, of the store. As the manager was wiping the ice cream off, she points to us and angrily asks us to come over. We booked it, abandoning our food and ran home. Dad's noticing us asking us what happened and we tell him. He gets mad, turns to mom and says, that was not necessary but mom wasn't having any of it and blamed it all on them. Brother was red in the face. I don't think he expected that to happen. About 10 minutes later, with parents arguing about it, 
The police show up with little sister. We all forgot about her. She was mad at us for leaving her behind. The cops basically told us we were banned from entering that DQ. All of us glare at brother, who looked mortified. I don't know if my mom got in trouble. If she did it was well deserved. But it was so embarrassing and unnecessary. To this day I haven't been back to that DQ. And that was almost 20 years ago. I always cringe a bit whenever I think about it. My dad was always running late and very frantic and upset when I was growing up. One evening, on our way somewhere, he ordered a bunch of food at a fast food drive through window asking that his burger not have mayonnaise on it. As he began to roll forward he quickly checked and realized they had put extra mayonnaise on it. This prompted my dad to speed devilishly around the fast food joint pull back through the drive through and hurl the burger splat at the closed drive through while cursing their incompetence. As an 8 year old this sort of behavior left a lasting impression with me and to this day it's very hard to rile me up because I never want to be like the man he was that day. Once my mum and I were at an awesome Chinese place. They had the best pork buns. So I was sitting there eating my pork bun and then the restaurant owner comes up to ask if we would like anything else. Me being about 7, pointed to the kids drink menu at a drink called the fire truck that sounded like an absolutely amazing drink. We ordered that and I kept eating my pork bun. When the drink arrived, it was a bright orange Fanta with lemonade and ice cream drink. My mum was shocked. She asked for the manager. Of course she did, and complained that it looked nowhere near a fire truck. Deep sigh please end me. My dad started throwing a huge fit at movie theater snack prices, which, to be fair, were utterly ridiculous. It was $6 for a bottle of water, so yeah, you can rage at that. But don't shout down the 15 year old cashier who I can almost guarantee has zero control over the pricing. If she did she would probably lower it so she would get shouted at less. My mother ranting to all and sundry she was going to get the brand new Walmart super center in our town shut down because a cashier closed her register as we were walking up. Apparently she could do this because she knew people on the internet. It was 1998. 14 year old me was mortified. Mum bought a pair of boots at a large, fancy department store. Wore them every day for approximately 6 months. Wore them in the rain a few times and the soles were eventually starting to come loose due to wear. While wearing the boots, she marches into the store, takes them off at the counter, plonks them down on the counter and demands a refund or a new pair, because the quality of the shoes were not up to par, arguing that if it were, the soles wouldn't have started coming loose. Note, she no longer has the receipt at this point, but argues the boots have the store logo on the bottom so she doesn't need one. She proceeds to argue for almost 20 minutes, refuses to budge, demands to see the manager. A queue has formed at this point and everyone is staring. The manager caves. He walks to the back, gets a new pair of boots and brings them to my mom. She puts them on right there at the counter and marches back out of the store as if nothing happened. OHH Lordy, my mom is one of those, but she's not the type to push her way through lines and would only talk to a manager if really need be. But due to her stern and scary personality she can really draw attention to herself. One incident when I was around 8 or 9 was when we had to pay our immigration fees. This wasn't in the USBTW but in the Philippines. We are in Filipino citizens so we need to go both to the US embassy than the local immigration offices to pay our yearly dues while living there. The immigration processing line was long, like DMV long and slow. Not to mention the office was infamous for having really lazy workers who only speed up the paperwork when there's a bribe. My mom after 2 hours of waiting had enough. She actually knew the vice chief at that time, went to school with him. And this is how the conversation goes. Mom, I want to speak to the Chief Wiggum, Simpson name here, Officer, scoffed at Mom, sorry but you can't just meet, Mom, cuts her off and leans in and in a low drawl, tell Chief Wiggum, Marge is here, he know who I am, looks at me then the officer, he knows who we are, Officer had a look of panic, asks a co-worker to watch his booth, and leaves, about 10 minutes later this jolly fellow, bit of sweat on his brow comes by, Hugs my mom and gave his officers a look. Mom took me by the hand and we were ushered to his office. In the 15 minute we were there, our papers were personally processed by him. In the next few years we would just walk into his office to get this done and had this perk till he passed away. Learned later that day of my memory, 
Chief Wiggum was in a board meeting when he got called and abruptly left. Due to my mom's actions it was assumed she was his mistress and me the love child. He got quite the teasing of a lifetime back of that. As a note, my mom was the alumni secretary of her school, is also one of the most beautiful in her class and is a badass. I never knew Chief Wiggum has been to our house many times during reunions. Many of my mom's classmates moved to being big bosses in govt offices and she pulled this prank a few times much to the amusement of her friends. They love her to bits. Nothing in that explanation convinced me that your mom wasn't his mistress and you are not the love child of Marge and Chief Wiggum. I haven't spoken to my mom in years, but she is 100% one of these people. One of the most cringy things I can think of, right around 9-11 I guess, there was the whole anthrax in the mail thing going on. But my mom ordered stamps through the mail. The stamps were delivered, along with a little note that said something about them having a powder coating on them. To absorb moisture and ensure they don't lose their adhesive. My mom, who probably didn't even notice the powder, calls the USPS and complains about how someone mailed her anthrax with her stamps. And when that went nowhere, she contacted all the local news outlets and had a press conference in our front yard, where she went on about why the USPS would try and poison her. I was sitting in the library in middle school with my mom and my advisor getting my assessment done to transition to high school. A bunch of other kids were at other tables with their parents and advisors. We were having a decent conversation but as soon as my advisor went over my test for results for math my mother blew up. I scored in the 99th percentile, ahead of kids in the honors classes. My mom was screaming and ranting in front of everyone else there. All the students were looking at us. She wanted to know why they had held me back, why they never put me in one of the high school math classes, and when the advisor recommended not sending me to summer school to complete algebra, it just made her furious. I remember seeing my crush's face and when he locked eyes with me I died a little in that chair. Thing was, I wasn't some math genius, she just forced me to learn algebra in my free time, that year, so they couldn't have figured it out because it didn't happen until a few months prior. And she knew it. My parents are terrible tippers. They genuinely believe that excellent service equals 10% tip. I have explained to them numerous times how servers tip out, etc. And they still think anything over 10% is generous. In this case, I feel it was justified. But one time as a 14 year old, a store tried to say that I was stealing a lip liner as my mom and I were walking out of the store. It was my chapstick that they didn't even sell at that store. My mom went off on them. It felt good to know someone had my back. TBH as I've gotten older, I've realized my mom just expects a standard and if it's not being met, she communicates it reasonably if a little tersely. I on the other hand am just less confrontational by nature and will likely just brush a lot of stuff off as a customer. My dad is kind of a drunk, a rich drunk. We were out at an extremely nice restaurant in our small town, a very foody and chic place that had only been open for a couple of years and had since become my favorite restaurant. I was sitting at a table with my siblings and cousins, all of us college age, while my dad was sitting with my aunt and uncle and mom at a table nearby. By the time we get our food, the parents are still sitting there chugging their wine with no food. My dad starts getting upset, I hear him call the waitress over. She brings them some bread and leaves them alone. We finish our meals and our parents are still sitting there without food and several empty bottles of wine. My mom is essentially fall asleep at this point. My father, furious, starts banging his fists on the table, shaking all of the silverware. The waitress goes into the kitchen to find the chef, but she is apparently taking too long. My dad storms into the kitchen. I hear him screaming at the top of his lungs like a freaking toddler. The chef calmly, politely walks him back to his table. He sits him down and, in the calmest voice possible, says, Frick you, sir. Now, get the frick out of my restaurant. We have not been back since. I was 14 and my mom did this crap at BK on my birthday because she didn't think the girl had the right attitude. I remember being like please don't do this even though I agreed the girl had a nasty attitude. Mum's partially deaf and the girl refused to speak louder or more clearly even after being told it plus rolling her eyes and twice getting the order wrong. Because I didn't want a scene. 
My mom was determined to speak with the manager though and wouldn't take our food until she did. Instead of getting the manager the girl decided she wanted to come around the counter and scream in my mom's face for being a deaf old bee. She swung on my mom and I jumped on the girl with my brother to keep her off my mom. She bit me twice. Police got called. We were banned from BK after the manager came out and took the employee's side. Cops did nothing because the girl was 16. Never been more embarrassed or angry. Ruined my whole birthday I should have said I wanted McDonald's instead. Oh well. Yeah, that doesn't really sound like her fault. Definitely embarrassing for you. But she's not the reason they suck. As the manager in a lot of these stories, I just want to say that the amount of time I have to encourage people to tell me when things are wrong greatly outnumbers the times people demand to see me without warrant. Yes, of course, I have had people make a beeline to me and start a conversation with are you the manager? Well, unleash torrent of BS anger. But I also bartend periodically and usually have to encourage my patrons to send something back if they don't like it. It's alarming how often someone will get an undercooked burger or a drink they don't like and would rather sit quietly in fear of being that person than to commit to letting me fix the problem. So those of you reading and saying I'll never complain please understand. My job is to make you happy with your service and to ensure you want to come back. If something is wrong, we are not mind readers. Tell us, I'd rather you mention it to me, a server or a bartender than to feel bad and never come back. Correcting a mistake is not the same as bitching me out because your mid-rare burger has some pink or your empty vodka tonic was too weak. My dad has the exact opposite problem. He insists on complimenting management, or better yet, owners, when their product or service is better than he expected. In principle this is fine, but he takes it to extremes. We once had to wait almost half an hour for a manager to be available because my dad insisted on speaking directly to the manager to let him know a certain staff member was especially helpful. Another time he called the pizza place back 4 times in 3 days asking for the owner because the pizza we got delivered was really good. When I went up a grade in high school and got a different history teacher my grades improved. Dad called the Department of Education and tried to formally request the teacher get a raise. He wanted to schedule an appointment with the principal for the same reason. I love him, but god dang he's a weird dude. Children of let me talk to your manager people. What was your most embarrassing moment? When I was young and my mom let me go to the barber by myself for the first time my mom felt that he didn't cut it short enough. Rather than going back and politely discussing the situation she screamed and hollered at the guy about him ripping her off. He stood there speechless. The worst part was that I had to get back in the chair and sit there awkwardly while he gave it a second shot, with her standing there directing him. That's terribly awkward. Oh man. 29th birthday last year. She's been like this my whole life. I'd cut ties but dad has Alzheimer's and if I want to see him she comes too. 10 cent fee for parking, 10 cents, a loan dime, Q screaming, swearing, demanding a manager, the parking lot attendant doesn't have a manager, and then cursing me out and telling me that my being willing to pay a 10 cent parking fee meant I was just another stupid shitstin poor millennial and this is why you're all broke you waste all your money, comma this is why you're all broke you waste all your money, you can get money back, time on the other hand. It is post 9-11 America, and I am in LAX with my younger brother and my dad, waiting for a flight. It begins to board, and my dad starts getting argumentative with the lady at the gate because she won't let him board first, with the elderly, veterans, injured veterans, people with very small kids, people with disabilities, etc. My dad was literally none of those things but proceeds to lose his mind anyway. He starts yelling, shouts that he has a bad back and is sick of this crap, is traveling with kids, points to us, his two teenage sons who have walked away from the line and are sitting down out of sheer embarrassment. and when he is told to stop, by a man carrying an actual small child in a baby jaw or whatever, screams at him, and says something meant to call attention to the hypocrisy he was experiencing and his just plight as a result, but insult, but insult, but insult, but insult, which everyone else loved, like, they were thrilled this butthole was getting escorted out of line, security talks to him and the lady working the gate as people continue onto the plane and so my dad becomes irate once more, 
This time because they're forcing him to get onto the plane later than he would have had he not sought special privileges and this is therefore overly punitive. And then we were on a plane with all of the people from the line. For the next 8 hours. And my dad yelled at a flight attendant because he believed she was ignoring him due to what happened at the gate. So now there was a plane wide conspiracy to freak up his life. By the time we landed he'd been in verbal confrontations with all local RAL members, other flight attendants, and sporadic outliers from other sections. Have you ever been blood related to the most disliked human being on an airplane? Most crying baby on an airplane whines are men, but this, that's the worst crying baby on an airplane story I've ever heard. I was doing work experience in a cafe kitchen during high school and my parents showed up wanting to be served by me. I wasn't allowed to since I was kitchen staff so my parents started yelling and screaming at the waitress. The manager came out, told them I was on a break and they screamed at her too. They were calling out to me, get your butt out here and serve us. They only left when the manager threatened to call the police. They were banned from the cafe. I nearly lost my placement. Without it I wouldn't have gotten my qualifications before I graduated. My teacher had my parents come to the school and tore strips off of them. That experience, coupled with the fact that my parents showed no remorse for their behavior killed any desire I had to work in the food industry. I had to discipline my grandmother when she and my father came to eat during my stint at Crapplebee's. She stated treating my co-workers like crap right out the gate. She's used to being treated like a Chevy Chase country club member and that is no excuse. And I had to tell her off about it. Not loudly. More like public mom voice. Thankfully she backed down. My dad pulls this a lot. I have to always bring it back and say dad this guy did nothing wrong he is just a messenger relax. I understand not agreeing with corporate protocol but don't yell and scream at the guy making $10 hour it's unfair. He knows that too. Oh man. My husband's parents are deaf and they insist on talking to the manager all the dang time. Which means my husband ends up having to translate and it's so embarrassing. He always apologizes profusely while at the same time having to translate a bitchy comment. I have a theory that not being able to communicate results in some people feeling like they are being cheated constantly. I've known other people who have had to translate for their parents and be constantly embarrassed by the experience. My mom had to go in for a beating with my principal but it turned out to be cancelled and no one notified her. She screamed at the office staff while walking out of the office. The principal showed up so he was screamed at and then she screamed at me since my bad grades were the reason we were there. This was before school so a lot of kids and teachers witnessed this. Only bright side was they never bothered calling my mom again. I'm certainly from that type of mother but my most embarrassing moment came two years ago while in Quebec, visiting from the US. This was our fist encounter having to speak with someone from the city besides the hotel who was speaking English. It was at a restaurant. Server, says something in French. Mom, American. I was so embarrassed. Not even a I'm sorry. Do you speak English just American? Her and I both only speak English and she's been to more countries than I have. I have no idea how she can be so crass. My dad screaming at the 16 year old girl behind the register at Target because he grabbed an item off of a shelf with a sign that said $20, but the item rang up as more than $20. The sign was for an entirely different item. He caused a huge scene and went off on her about how she put the item there on purpose to trick customers. She was genuinely terrified and my mom and I had to calm everybody down. I once had an old man, like maybe 70, yell at me because a BB cream rang up for 100, knock not dollar, instead of 50. It was my first week at that place, and the first time I was alone in the register. Thankfully the assistant manager came over and showed him why he was wrong in a sort of condescending way as he deserved. My stepmom is lactose intolerant and ordered a plate of pasta without the dairy ingredients. They brought everyone else's food out because, as they told her when she ordered, it would take a little extra time to make her a special plate. She blew up at this and yelled at the waiter for not allowing her to eat dinner with her family. The poor waiter came back and apologized and ended up not charging us for most of our meals. She was still extremely rude to him. As we were leaving our waiter wished us happy holidays, which prompted another scene from my my stepmom because they didn't say Merry Christmas. I don't see much of that side of the family anymore. Sounded petty as heck with her. 
When I was 15 my mom, sister, and I had doctor's appoints and as it was earlier in the morning we decided to stop and eat to get breakfast as none of us ate. As it was a Saturday morning it was quite packed and we only had an hour to get it and eat and make it on time for us to make it to the first appointment. When our order was taken and we waited and waited my mom got more and more irritated. Eventually she complained to the waitress about how we were in a hurry and what was taking so long. Keep in mind the restaurant had a line of at least 20 people waiting just to sit down so you can imagine how crowded it was. As my mom keep complaining my sister and I both were becoming more and more embarrassed and shot her apologetic looks. My mom eventually says that we will just have to leave because we didn't have time for this crap. At this point we started getting looks from other people eating in the restaurant. The waitress then told us she said that she'd have to cook try to prioritize our meal and that it should be out in a bit. She was also very polite and apologized profusely for everything. It wasn't more than 5 minutes later and she came sprinting to our table with our food in hand and constantly kept tabs on us in case we needed anything. In all honesty she was the best waitress I think I've ever had at any restaurant with just how nice she was. We all ate, and it was obvious that my mom was still upset at how long it took for the food to come out. So as we were leaving my sister decided to lay down a $10 tip for the waitress, but my mom grabbed it and said that they didn't deserve that tip. She stormed to the front and my sister looked at me and just rolled her eyes and walked towards the front with our mom. I stayed at the table to finish my drink as she came by and that's when I apologized to her about my mom, and then handed her a $20 bill for a tip and thanked her for the service. When I got to the front there was a line of people who were waiting to check out. Obviously my mom didn't like that and decided that she was done with everything. When we got to pay she did and then proceeded to ask for a manager. But before she could do that my sister and I more or less begged her to just come on and let it go. She had already embarrassed us enough. She eventually agreed but still told off the worker who was taking our money. My mom stormed out and my sister and I apologized to the worker and walked out behind her. To this day my mom still complains about the service on that day and how she was in the right to complain about it all. I really don't understand her behavior, and also the fact that she seems totally disconnected of the reality. You and your sister acted very well though. You are nice people. So one time I forgot to pay for something in my college dues. Me and my dad both went to the financial aid office to explain it was a slip of the mind and ask them to take off the fees and we would pay the due. My dad explodes on the girl behind the counter, yelling up a storm after she says that it's not possible to remove the late fee. My dad screams let me talk to your higher up, and the dean gets involved. The girl starts crying and she bolts out the room. It was horrendous. After hours of talking to many people we get the fine taken off and the due as well as a sort of get out of here please bribe. Instant karma when we get out and there is a parking bill the exact amount that we would have paid for the due and late fee. Yes I love this. I was with my father and he was buying me my first laptop and the best buy we went to had an advertisement sign that was out of place. It implied that the laptop I had chosen was another 25% off or something but I'm sure if you read the fine print it said a specific model. Anyway we get to the front and they ring it up and my dad gets pee. He demands a manager and another manager and every discount you could think of but they cannot bring the 2k laptop down 25%. The sale is not on that model and the sign was out of place. He won't have it and keeps bitching. Eventually he buys it and we leave but good lord I wanted to melt into the floor. I ended up nervously wandering away and pretending to be very interested in the candy bars next to the checkout stand because I was just mortified. Side note, dad was a surgeon at his private practice. He was very wealthy. Don't know if my mom does this exact thing but I've seen her get unreasonably angry at those receipt checkers on the way out if Walmart target type stores. She says they are accusing her of stealing. They are treating her like a criminal. Mortifying. She doesn't steal. Try telling her they do it to scare the people behind her. That's what we get told in training. The idea is, supposedly, if thieves see honest people being checked they'll give up. My dad once argued with the manger of an auto parts store for almost 30 minutes because they said the rear brakes on his car were disc brakes while my dad insisted they were drum brakes. After all of his yelling he stormed out with me in tow to another store. Once we got there he calmly purchased a set of disc style brakes. I was with my friend and her mom in the grocery store. 
Her mom's wiped her credit card to pay and the payment didn't process and the cashier asked her to swipe one more time and she refused and made a scene. My friend looked like her insides were curdling. Poor thing Lmeo. She was so embarrassed that her mom was making a scene and in front of me no less. My grandmother brought underpants she had purchased a few days before back to the store and demanded a discount because they had gone on sale and she wanted the difference back. She made 11 year old me accompany her to learn the value of money. All I learned was $1.50 is not worth the embarrassment. Comma she made 11 year old me accompany her to learn the value of money. All I learned was $1.50 is not worth the embarrassment. My dad used to talk about the price of one's dignity. Getting made over a buck and a half means that you value your dignity less than the cost of a cheeseburger, which is absurd. I ordered a chicken fried steak at a gym's once. I like a lot of salt on my food, so when it arrived a little salty, I didn't even notice, and thought it tasted fine. My mom kept asking for a piece of it, even though she had her own meal, so I let her have a bite. She immediately squinched up her face and said it was too salty and tasted bad, then called the waiter and tried to make her take it back, even though it wasn't her meal and I was enjoying it. I hope you let her know that you're never letting her taste your food ever again after that. Outback Steakhouse had this limited edition bacon mac and cheese, or something like that. It was a fancy side dish, so it cost a bit more than a normal side dish like mashed potatoes. My mother lost her goddamn freaking crap because the server said the red be a $2 fee for substituting the bacon mac and cheese as a side with a steak entree. I sat across from her at the table and stared as she threw her temper tantrum, willing myself to just stop existing or at least die. She kept pointing to the menu and snapping, but why does it have to cost more the poor waiter was so patient, and when the manager came out he told her the same thing. It's a $2 surcharge because the item is limited edition and is a bit more expensive for the restaurant to make. They can't make an exception. But logic? Class? Humility? My mother? H.A. Death first. She took the high road and stormed out of Outback Steakhouse over $2 extra for bacon mac and cheese that no one was forcing her to order. I made the excuse of going to the bathroom as she went to her car and left a $10 on the table for the server. I would have left more had I had it. Well presented. This made me laugh. My mom did this all the time. She would tell me to walk away and go play somewhere else while she screamed at the top of her lungs so everyone in the store could hear her cursing the manager and the employee out. I always hoped she got whatever she wanted because if not that meant she was likely going to beat the crap out of me when we got home with the restraining belt. I hope this is a joke because if not I feel really bad that you grew up that way. It's not a specific one time thing, but my mom regularly embarrasses me by trying to get deals at places. It's one thing if it's an antique store or something, but she'll ask it at corporate places where it's very obvious the kid making $9 HR doesn't have any way to adjust pricing for no reason. And usually before she jumps into this speech, she will begin by asking the person how much it costs, and when they tell her, she'll say wow, that is really expensive. Not sure it's worth that or something borderline insulting, implying they are overcharging or trying to rip her off. I just don't understand why she thinks insulting the business or product straight off the bat is going to make them want to cut her a deal. In fact, when I worked in retail, I knew very well that the person who comes in with a bad attitude apropos nothing is usually a terrible customer who is going to cause more problems long term and I typically dissuade them from buying anything, not try to actively cater to them. I've tried to sort of guide her into not behaving like that, but I don't know, there's nothing I can really do in the moment, so I usually just roll my eyes and try to stand far away from her so people don't realize we're together. I've been a cashier for years so I've seen a lot of the let me talk to your manager people, and have seen their children or spouses cringe. One really stands out, I've had a regular customer for years, really nice girl. Had one of those the good ones are already taken moments when I met her. Now she's always polite and friendly and completely understanding when things go wrong. After a few years she came in with her mother. Now I knew her, her mother was coming because because she mentioned that she was dreading the visit. Well when they got to the register the chip reader wasn't working right. 
Well of course the mom had the usual explosion talk to the manager in a very condescending manner the usual. But my regular had walked outside the store the instant it started. I went outside to seep off the porch at about the same time. Yes I had ulterior motives, and got to hear what happened after the mom came out. The daughter read her the riot act, said that now that she has kids she won't permit anyone who acts like that around her children. She doesn't want her son to pick up bad habits, and that if she doesn't shape up then she will have to cut ties. That led to another explosion from the mom things like that's not fair, you can't do this to me, I'm your mother, act. Ended up with my regular walking home because her mother drove. Never saw the mother again. Damn. I love that she actually held her responsible though. That's one of the most important things. I don't think I could sit around and endure family or friends treating other humans like garbage without reacting. My mom wanted to fix her watch. Goes to a store. She talks to a trainee that seemed reasonably clueless. Mom calls for the manager which she swears to this day gave her attitude. She just tried to calm my flaming mother. Mom pulled my arm out of my body and out of the store. Never in my life did I pity my own existence that much. I'm on the other side of the counter. My whole family has worked in hospitality so we know not to scream at your server, and last week I had a group in who were really lovely all evening. Then it came to pay. They kicked off about a bottle of wine. And it escalated to the point where I was being screamed at over the bar. One middle aged man even went on to mimic my laugh. Pretty immature when you're outright making fun of an 18 yo girl who's trying her best to keep it together. Anyway, the laugh mimica eventually paid. Signed the receipt and threw it at me then stormed off. I called sir. You've left your card. His youngish son was still at the bar. And I gave it to him and apologized again. He looked so embarrassed and apologized to me and told me not to worry about it. Must be pretty tough being associated with people that'll be outright rude and bitchy over a bottle of wine. My mom wanted to return the product. We had to wait until someone could attend which was about 5 minutes. She got so irritated that she yelled at some worker to get a manager. Manager comes and she just talks crap on him about how there should be workers and we shouldn't have to wait for someone to show up. At that point I left and she came back with the product and no refund. She got kicked out and basically banned for like a month. When I told my mom I failed my driving test for the third time she stormed into the DMV and raised holy heck, yelling at the driving tester lady and demanding she change her mind and let me pass. I absolutely never wanted to get behind the wheel of a car again. But my mom assumed this was because the driving tester had ruined my confidence, and not because my mother had magnified my failure so much. My mill is like this, and my wife is just done with it. She's so over it. Last time something like this happened was my Phil's birthday. My wife ended up apologizing to the waiter and the manager of the restaurant. We very seldom go out to eat with my in-laws unless it's to one very specific, slightly expensive restaurant of which they're regulars. These people aren't referred to as regulars, they're groaned about upon entry, usually something along the lines of I hate these people, they come in every week and are always awful, if you are a pain in the butt and or tip poorly, you're not a regular, just a constant nuisance. I vividly remember an incident in a restaurant with my grandma many years ago, was with her, my mom, and my sister, we had all ordered. And it was taking a while to arrive. No big deal. It was busy. Everyone was trying their best. And sometimes you just gotta wait. The waitress comes by to check on us. Her. Would you guys like some more water? GMA. No. But we'd like our lunch. Please. The girls. Meaning my sister and I. Are getting hungry. Neither of us had said a single peep about being hungry. Or anything else. Because she was always too absorbed in her conversation with my mom to pay much attention attention to us. I was only about 10 or so, but I was mortified that she would be so rude, and so sorry for that waitress that I snuck back and apologized to her for grandma's behavior before we left. That sounds kinda adorable in a somewhat sad way, just this little 10 year old sneaking back to apologize. I bet she appreciated that a lot. I did it to my mom actually. I got very mad at a customer service lady and said well I guess you need to have your hand held. My mom was mortified. I was mortified when the anger went away later. At least you see your fault and were remorseful. Most people can't say that after they've acted like a complete dickhead. I wasn't there to witness it. 
thankfully, and at least my mom was self-aware enough to retell this story with herself as the butt of the joke. When I was in junior high my mom was concerned that my taste in music meant there was something wrong with me. She thought I was too interested in dead people. I liked the Beatles, The Doors, Queen, Janis Joplin, and I loved Nirvana. I begged for Nirvana CDs for Christmas and birthday gifts, 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 gifts. When Unplugged in New York came out something changed and she softened enough to at least go into the store and look at the CD case to see if it was something that she wouldn't mind seeing under the tree. Imagine her horror when she finds a small razor blade tucked inside the case. Here was a band where the lead singer committed suicide and they were selling the CD with razor blades included. She was outraged and found the nearest employee to give him a piece of her mind. Oh, that I could have been there to watch him explain it was the anti-theft device. She was so mortified she fled the store, and I still did not get my Nirvana CD. At one point, it was in the late 80s, I wanted to take a picture of the restaurant in and out to send to some friends who lived on the east coast. So we went there to eat and my dad took a couple of pictures of the building. A worker comes out, a kid, probably 16 or 17, and he says to my dad, very calmly and matter of fact, my manager says that people aren't allowed to take pictures of the building. Without missing a beat my dad says, go tell your manager to put his stick up his butt. I was shocked and felt bad for this kid who probably didn't want to go out to talk to him in the first place. Then we went and got our food and I could just feel everyone there glaring at us. Comma without missing a beat my dad says, go tell your manager to put his stick up his butt. I was shocked and felt bad for this kid who probably didn't want to go out to talk to him in the first place. Then we went and got our food and I could just feel everyone there glaring at us. Your dad seems like a cool guy, except he got the food ordering and crap talking backwards. My cousin's dad tried to beat a security guard up because he assumed he knew more than the people working at Curry's PC World. Not so much embarrassing as frustrating and unexpected. My dad was this guy for a long time. Mostly at restaurants yo. He worked in restaurant equipment for a while and never let go of whatever imaginary standard for food service he'd cooked up while in the industry. There was a steakhouse in my hometown that we'd frequent. And of all the times we went there, I can probably count on one hand the number of nights his steak was cooked to his satisfaction and it wasn't sent back after a long chat with the manager. It was so predictable. I started to wonder if this was just his way of gaming the joint for a free meal. Flash forward to some random weekday night my senior year of high school and my family stops into a bar and grill type place we'd never been to. The old man orders a sandwich and chips. They bring it out and much to our shock an industrial sized razor blade is mixed in with my dad's chips. I had two thoughts. One, the universe picked the wrong guy for this bulls. If his steakhouse behavior was any indication, someone might get killed here tonight. And two, we are going to be rich. I could already imagine the lawsuit and news story that would inevitably follow. It felt like a blessing in disguise. For a moment I felt like his entire history as a restaurant patron had been preparation for this moment and this razor blade. Yet, as the drama of the moment ebbed, and after a quick chat with the manager, he happily let them comp our meal and that was the end of it. He seemed satisfied that it was more likely the fault of the chip maker and we left it at that. I still don't know what to make of it 15 years later. I found a staple in my salad a few weeks ago. They gave us the salad for free. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.